Welcome to the, the end of the year review. High Spark Podcast with your boys Matt. Motherfucking going into a new year like Boom Jackson. And your boy Jedi Joe Motherfucking. <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is the end of the year review. WWE, AEW, rumors, controversies, everything that happened this year. Yeah, and not 2023. Just, remember, all of 2023. Yeah, remember, all of remember, it's not even just WWE and AEW. We're going to be throwing in some OVW. OVW. Stuff like that. OVW, WWE, WWE. Pure Pro Wrestling here in Danville, Virginia. We're gonna hit you. We're gonna hit you with that. We're gonna hit you with that like button, that subscribe button right there. Hit the like button, the subscribe like, button. Like, comment, subscribe. That notification bell. Hit that bell. notification bell. Tell us what you want us to talk about when you make a comment. Hit it, hit it with a tombstone. Right and on then, that thing. If yeah. you don't, you're cursed. Dan Housen told me to tell y'all that. Let, let us know. He told me in a dream to tell all y'all that Dan Housen said if you don't hit that subscribe, notification bell, all the stuff that we just asked. Follow us on he's Twitter. He's going to curse everyone, last of, us, last of us, man. Or X, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Yeah, the Xer. On so TikTok. You can go over there. And you know you know what they were saying about that? They were saying that like very few people are like actually saying X or something like that. Something's being said about that. I, you know, but... Uh, you know, we 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 gonna we, we gonna start this year off good, man. It is New Year's Eve, dog. And, and happy New Year! It's Happy New Year's. It's it's New Year's Eve right now. We got things to do, so we got this. Like we gonna put this out New Year's Eve, and um, we yeah, want everybody yeah. to have a great and safe mm-hmm. holiday and a, a safe New Year's Eve as well. Because we're gonna bring in twenty twenty four. Pop that champagne. Pop that champagne. Hit man. that weed. Do what you do. Hit that dab, man. Hit that dab, dog. I want every last one of my viewers high as gas, as long as you're age appropriate. Age appropriate. Age appropriate. 21 and over. But see, that sends me down to Southwick Plaza Vapes. Tobacco and Vapes. To get you a vape or something. They got good sales over there. Uh, they all the time be hitting you with a sale. 230 Cane, sometimes. Cane Creek Tobacco Vapes. Cane store. Creek. We got Blue Park. Blue Park. What's the other ones? We got the one that's over there in your skate town. We don't talk uh. about them enough. Tobacco. We got the one that's over here in uh, Can- yeah, you say Cane Creek, Southwick. Uh, um, our boys at Southwick. Mount Cross Mount over Cross, there yep. near uh, over there near Tokyo Grill. And Luna Vapes. Lunar, Lunar Vapes, Vapes is gone. What? It's gone now. Hmm. No more Lunar Vapes. I got me. I got the last of the Snoopy a, Smoke, and now I got an Elf Bar Cherry Dragon. I heard there was a um a thing going on. At Lunar, the, or, like, there's a new vape store there. Maybe. I don't know, but I know that they had the Lunar Vapes is gone, but mm-hmm. we've got those, and we've got Lady Luck Pawn Shop mm-hmm. down there on Riverside Drive, Danville, Virginia. Danville, all of these things. All these things are Danville, Virginia. Danville, Virginia. Um, we've also got... You're uh, traveling through Danville. Damn, I'm missing somebody. I'm missing somebody, man. Lady Luck and... Candace and Dustin. Candace and Dustin's, but I'm missing somebody. There's somebody else here. Or it's not. And I think it is. No. Kyle Foster Music. Kyle Foster. Go look him up on that YouTube right now. And it's Kyle Foster Music. Look him up. He's Kyle. got a guitar. And it's great music. So Cage look him Foster. up. Subscribe Check him in. out. Our boy. We got Paul, uh, Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast. We got the uh, WTF Podcast. Uh, we've got the... The uh, Cornette Experience. Cornette Experience. Uh, the Jim, Jim Cornette. Uh, the Jim Cornette Official YouTube Channel. Whatever. Look him up. It's good shit. Uh, great podcast this year. I mean, if we're going to talk about, since we're talking about podcasts at the moment, Jim Cornette was on something this year. I mean, like, he was really clanging and banging some good ones, um, as he always does. But this year was really just, it's been very interesting with Jim Cornette because the wrestling has been shit in his words over there in AEW. And in the beginning of the year, it was with WWE. It was just like shit. And uh, he wasn't liking anything Bray White was doing all the way up, you know, until he died. He didn't wow. like anything he was really doing. Um, and then after he does, you know, of course, he doesn't say anything bad anymore. Of course, you don't. That's would be disrespectful, but it's just funny. You know, it's just something I want to be funny about. But anyway, but uh, 
but yeah, he's been just he's been just he's just been great, you know. Um, yeah, check them guys out. Check out Cornette. Um, I know there's uh, Sin Crowley actually has a YouTube channel, hmm. so go check out Sin Crowley over there. Uh, we got Pure Pro Wrestling has a YouTube channel. Go check CPW. them out. The one that's up north and the one here in Danville in North Carolina, they both have YouTube channels. Hmm. Go subscribe to them. Uh, Deadlock Pro. I told myself I was going to plug them. Deadlock Pro Wrestling. Uh, Chris Danger. He's an actual YouTuber for wrestling games. Mm-hmm. You know, he's been there. He's gotten famous off that. And he's actually a wrestler now. So now he's over there with that. And uh, But we're going to talk about that a little later because we got some debuts and stuff to talk about Deadlock Pro. But I just want to shout out Deadlock Pro because I want all y'all to go over there to the YouTube channel and go subscribe to them. And OVW, they're clanging and banging some stuff out, too. I was about to make y'all watch the damn Holiday Yule or Yule Tidings or whatever the pay-per-view is called and review that. But I ain't had the time to do it. But um, but either way, all these new companies coming out. But what I really wanted to, uh, to do is all the, you know, we got all our plugs in there. All the plugs are good. I think everything's good. I think everything's good, right? I ain't missing nobody. Am I? We got John Washington, the John Washington. Check it out. Um, we got uh, the Beast Jock Cold, Zombie Dragon. Look them all up on the YouTube channel. Great matches from all these guys. Good wrestlers, good friends of mine. Um, if you can find them, check out what's our friend's name. Our first ever. Zombie Dragon. No. The second. Charles the, Singer. Yeah, Chuck Singer. Chuck Singer. If you can find him. The Iceman Chuck Singer. Check him out. Yeah, that was, that's a good interview. podcast. Actually, guys. Check out that interview. Actually, let me tell y'all right now. We have an album on this channel. You go over to the albums and look through them. It's literally a, a whole all album of all of our interviews. Yeah. Even the first ones I did before I brought on right. a host and shit. Um, and they were, like, funny. Me and Singer did this, like, jokey one. I had some different ideas about it. Like, I wanted to be funny with it. And then I was like, nah. We can be all we can be what I want, but I want to have more sense to it, not have like be in joke. But either way, so all of our interviews are all in one album or whatever it's called yeah. on there. It's it's a folder. You go in there and it's all of them. The first one to the latest one. And we've got some coming up, boys and girls. Yeah. And them they's and and, and all that. We have all, got all inclusive cast. Ink. Yeah. We have got some interviews coming up in the near future. We have, um, they're called micro wrestlers. Micro wrestlers. Yeah, so they're micro wrestlers. So, and we've got um, a guy who is a micro wrestler, man. He's, uh, you know, um, I, 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 you know, I talked to him over, um, you know, I talked to him, and he's down to do it. And um, we're happy to have him come in and do some interview. Um, at some point this coming up this year. So we're going to be starting to put out some more interviews in the beginning of the year. We got that and we've got like quite a few other ones. Um, but I don't want to give away no names, you know, really because one of them is on my, my have to do got to get it done at some point interviews. So we've got that lined up coming up and we've got some other things that we're going to be doing differently this year and just trying to make everything comfortable for all of the hosts and members of the uh, podcast because yeah. we've got a new member now, Kyle. And I'd like to get Jay in on there, too, so we have a four-man cast, and we can all cast, you know, talk to each other on the Facebook, whatever. We do it the way we got to do it. So there's some different changes coming, so stay tuned. And that's what I'm saying. Like and subscribe. Hit like, the notification bell. Like, comment, button. subscribe. Hit that notification Whew. bell. Tell us what you want us to talk about. That was a lot that I had to say. That was okay. a lot that we had to say. Yeah, but anyway, so we got the have to have to say out the way. Okay. We are going to start this shit about this thing that I've been kind of, I've been kind of excited about this, okay? So for, okay, so... We, of course, we have had, we had the best of impact that happened right for this year. Okay, that happened, and there's part one and two out there on Access TV. If you go check it out, um, but not only that, boys and girls, but this year marks the last year that we have this pathetic run as a company name. Impact is over. The name is over. Okay, I am so fucking ecstatic for this, guys. So ecstatic, okay? So, I will 
be watching TNA. It will be getting recorded. It will be watched, and I will be reviewing TNA for this year. The first episode is getting reviewed. Um, and that that is a resolutions that we're talking about here too. Is these changes that we're gonna make? We're gonna make some good changes, some actual, some actually smart changes, and all that other stuff. But TNA is coming back. Total nonstop action is coming back with the name, at least. I mean, and I see that they've got Alex Shelley booked, and they've got Eddie Edwards, and they've got Moose, and they've got uh, Josh Alexander. So that's pretty good. But I'm just saying, like, it's going to be, what is it, US, let's see, Access TV, Thursdays at 8, YouTube Impact Insiders, Thursday, 8.30, uh, TNA Plus, Thursdays, 10 p.m., Fight Network, Thursday p.m., YouTube Impact Insiders, Thursday, 8.30, oh, Game TV, Thursday, 11.30 p.m., the UK and Ireland stuff, if there's any viewers from there, you've got the same impact, but it's on 1.30 a.m. BST, Fridays, and then TNA Plus is Fridays, 3 a.m. BST, channel, uh, and then D, uh, what is it called? Dan's Dan's in D A Z N whatever channel that so is. So if you're in the UK, channel four twenty nine. Record Sky, Fridays twenty two fifteen BST. Record. We're your not going through all this. TNA Impact shows. Actually, we'll hit on Mexico. No, India. Pretty sure we got view. I know we got viewers in India. So YouTube Impact Insiders will be Friday six a.m. IST, <clears throat> and then TNA Plus is Friday seven thirty a.m. IST. Africa, it's on this E. I know y'all probably know. Saturdays, 2.35 p.m. Um, and we'll hit on Mexico. Mexico's got MF, I mean, MVS TV. Saturdays, 10 p.m. SDT. So, look, I just wanted to read that off so if the viewers are watching in certain whatever, they'll know that at least. Um, but yeah, so this year marks the last of impact. Now, granted the beginning of impact was pretty dope. Like when they changed the name, it was okay. It was like when WWE first changed their name to get the F out, you know, and then we had WWE, right? It was kind of like that. It was kind of like sour grapes. We're like, Oh fuck, dude, they just changed the name. This is not what we grew up on. Right. I like the nostalgic WWF, right? Whatever. But I got used to it, and then it started just, ugh. and it started. Then I stopped watching it altogether for like two, three years. I spot watched it, right? Spotty watched it. I am gonna try my damnness. I'm gonna record it, so I'm gonna be watching. I'm gonna be watching TNA because the name is back. Is that crazy? How a name could change the whole reason I'm wanting to watch. It's kind of crazy to be honest. Actually, to be honest, Dojo is that it was COVID. That literally fucking killed yeah. the impact all the way because yeah. then they stopped crowds altogether yeah. after the fact that they were bringing crowds back. Yeah. But the product was still, it was, it was, and the, and you think, oh, fans make a difference, right? Well, some of the stuff the fans didn't make a difference on because it was no fans there. They kept it going like crazy. It was wild with the impact. I just didn't, I didn't care for it. But we have TNA coming back. I'm excited about it. January, what, what did it say? It said January something, but I can't remember exactly, but I have it on here. But um, The announcement was made this year, so it comes yeah. back January. January 13th is hard to kill. So we have that. That's a pay-per-view. It's going to be TNA. No Surrender is, okay, so we have Hard to Kill is Saturday, January 13th, Las Vegas, Nevada. Then we have TNA No Surrender, which is Friday, February 23rd, New Orleans, Los Angeles. I mean, well, well, New Orleans, Louisiana. Louisiana. Woo! Ugh. Can't talk. Going fast. Um, but anyway, so that's that. So in January, the first pay-per-view is what I just said. So <clears throat> with that being said, that's just, that's awesome, right? I mean, you liked it better than with TNA, right? I watched it a little bit. Like, I, I watched it very sporadically um, when I would see it at, like, Hams. Oh, yeah, yeah, with the pay-per-views there. Um, I watched it a little while. Like, I caught the Jay Lethal and Ric Flair flare off when Jay Lethal was Macho Man for a little while. 
Um, and so I'm excited to see what they do because their, their product was interesting when I watched it. I can say that. Um, yeah, I think you were talking about Robert Roode and, um, James Storm and James Storm coming back together. That would be cool because they were a good duo. I was hearing that James Storm was going to AEW, but I'm not sure. There's some rumors about that, but I, we'll be getting the rumors later. <clears throat> so, yeah. TNA, when I watched what I could, or, you know, when I caught it on TV, it was good stuff. So, I'm excited to see what they can do. Yeah, definitely. Um, I like that they're using the red and yellow logo. I like that. Um, I think that was uh, that's a good go with that. So, so it's a, it's a, it's a good move. It's just a good move, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll get out. I know we probably hit on this. Well, I know we've said it on the podcast before about TNA going back. You know, in January, but we're at the end of the year review podcast here, and we're talking about everything that happened this year. Yeah, and that is like. One of my biggest deals, and I'm just happy all together. And we ain't even got to the juicy fucking debuts yet. And I'm already fucking salivating at just a name change. And usually you don't want a name change when you have right. such a great name like NXT or the Indies. And then WWE's like, nope, you got to change it to Frederick Alexander. And you're like, Frederick Alexander? Oh, fuck. I'm like, yep, got to go out there and be Frederick Alexander. What is a Frederick Alexander? What is and who is a Frederick Alexander? Right? It's not if that was your name going into it, then fine. But if that's something like you were Frederick given, Frederick Alexander should be. Played, it's a name generated name. I feel like Frederick Alexander should be played like Hunter or Stelmsley. Kind of, yeah. Like that, it should be this pompous. I call arrogant. all the kid. I call all the babies that are around me in my life, like my sister's babies. Over time, my babies, uh, the boys got it. I call him Frederick Alexander. I have no clue. My mom started it because my mom would say something like that. Frederick. She would say Frederick. Mm -hmm. All right, Frederick. And so I would just, because I have an Alexander nephew. I have a nephew named Alexander. So then it started with him and I call him Frederick Alexander. And then I started calling all the babies Frederick Alexander. But then you actually think about it. I might actually create that character on the game. So another thing that's coming in 2024 is Lick My Plate Gaming. It's going to be in the description. You can go down there and click the fucking link down there in the description and go to my channel. And, and we got uh, I got 360-some subscribers now. It's growing. It's growing. It's growing. It's about 400 now. I'm getting there. But what I'm saying is we're going to draft a whole fucking thing. I got all the characters you can think of, except for like some few don't really matter characters. And I've got everything like Bray Wyatt and Uncle Howdy's and all that stuff. And boom, we're going to be doing that this year. Um, we may or may not do voiceovers. I'm not sure. We might do some commentary on it. I think that'd be fun, right? Huh? Watch the match and commentary on it. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just some added little bonus uh, shit. But anyway, and I've already started this year. You can go check out my pay-per-views that I'm starting off with, getting the hang of it, and just getting it in my... Getting in my... Getting it in my um, routine, I guess, to doing full shows again and uh, shit like that. And so I usually just put out a match a day, but I'm trying to go back into doing match, some matches a day, but then more full-length shows. Anyway, that's going to get creative. But anyway, what are we going to be talking about next? We, 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 we've talked about TNA. I think this year's been great. You know what we didn't talk about? And we I guess talk we'll about talk what about, we did. This we year. haven't talked about what we did this year. We just jumped right on in with the TNA stuff, which is great because I just had to get that out there. The TNA stuff is big. Um, what we did this year, man, we did been to some concert this year. We did NASCAR. Alley. We went to NASCAR. Yeah, we did this um, wrestling shows. We did. We went to PPW. So, yeah, a few times. Yeah, we did a whole lot of parties this year too. We did a whole lot of parties. Yep. My birthday party, your birthday party. Like, it was a lot. Bam's birthday party, Kelly's birthday party. Like, there was so many. I mean, it, like it is every year. Um, so many birthday parties. But you've been to Carowinds quite a few times this year. Mm, Spook couple, Fest or yeah. Horror Fest. We went to. Or whatever it's called. Uh, Scarewinds. Scarewinds. And, and we you went, went to, to Christmas, Christmas one. Which had been dope, man. I'm we a Christmas fanatic, time. dude. We went to Carowinds one time this summer, too, so. 
Yeah, so you was you was able to do that. Um, we went to box guard that one night. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else did we do? I'm trying to think of some big things I did. I know the NASCAR Alley was probably the biggest thing I did, other than Devil May Die mm-hmm. and going to their their shows, going to all their first shows except for like one or two or maybe one. No, it was two. I didn't get to one. I got to the last song, but uh, I'm trying to get on the show with them. I'm trying to play a gig with them. I'm trying to open up for them. Uh, we do this improv music for both my things. I do it's all improv and all like just really creative and artistic and shit. And uh, we should have a spot there. Hopefully in March we'll have a spot. Um, so that was cool. That actually happened this year, but that's gonna be happening next year. So that's even hyper. You know, my New Year's looking good. Like I might be actually performing as Lord Atheist. You know. Like, soon. Like, you know, any chance I get, I'm going to do it. But. I reached 10 years sober from alcohol this year. We had this big thing, which I I was huge. Parents, all your family, Mm -hmm. friends, Mm -hmm. closest friends and family. And it was a 10-year sobriety, and that's a big deal. And that happened this year. 10-year alcohol sobriety in 2023, yeah. That is a big deal, and um, you know I'm saying, what a year, man! Crazy, crazy Kevin Powell. Kevin Powell. So much. Send you on down there to crazy Kevin Powell. If you're trying to get Foothills your- Ford and Pilot Mountain, yeah, you got to go over there and get you a car and shit, man. I, I should car. get paid by this dude, man. He should give me a car all the way. Crazy. No, Kevin actually, if he can just give me a good moped that I don't need a license for, I'll be fine. Um, hook me up with a couple of those. Couple of different colors, you know, for my outfit. Crazy, Kevin Powell. You know, couple, couple, couple different colors for my outfits. You know, a red one, a blue one. You gotta match your outfit. Match my outfit with, with your a Vespa. black one. Yep. With your scooter. Yeah, my little faggio. You gotta play Grand Theft Auto to get that one. I did not curse or say anything bad. It the the, the scooter on freaking faggio, GTA is called a faggio mm. or a faggio. It's pronounced something else, but it looks like that. It's funny, man. It's weird too, man. I just always thought it was weird. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a whole different podcast right there. The new game's coming out. We got Robocop just dropped, dude. That rhyme that is full be Robocop a GTA game. six this like, year. And I can't get Robocop until I fucking upgrade. Robocop the game. So and I want to get Robocop. That that game right there, dude. That's something I would go out of my way to get. Um Let's talk about it. Let me say. Um, AEW, the wrestling game, Fight Forever. AEW, Fight Forever. It's dead now. It like, died. it is dying, dude. They keep adding to it. And, and and these prices are fucking ridiculous. Look, I looked on it for Black Friday, dude. And for Christmas sales, right? Nothing. No cheapness to the DLC, nothing. So I didn't get none of that DLC. Nothing. I've been waiting for the acclaim. Look, the tag team, the acclaim should have been on the game when the game dropped. Okay, I'm sorry. So many guys, so many characters should have been on the game. Anyway, so yeah, AEW's dead. AEW. Well, not the company, but the died. damn game died. The game died. I mean, <laughs> we're waiting and hoping for a resurrection, but I don't think it's gonna happen. So I went and got WWE. I mean, I've been doing that. So lick my plate gaming, go check it out. I got some good content over there. Big things happening this year coming up, man. So we've got we're gonna talk about new companies coming in, man. New companies. Like we've got uh Deadlock Pro Wrestling, like Deadlock we were talking Pro about. Wrestling. Yep. That's a new one. We've got NWA, like it's been taken over by, you know, Smash Your Pumpkins Philly for Corgan. You know, for the lead singer, you know, Billy Corgan from a minute. But they're doing big things over there and hopefully even bigger. MLW is supposed to be getting a TV deal. I don't know when that's supposed to be happening, but they're supposed to be getting that. T- NWA was supposed to be getting a TV deal, too. But, you know, they messed that up with that cocaine spot. Remember that? What time is it? Pay-per-view's on? Eight o'clock. Damn, pay-per-view's on. Um, <laughs> but, um, let's see. Do-do-do-do-do. The Rock buried Austin Theory. The Rock. Buried Austin Theory. We got OVW's doing big things. Pure Pro Wrestling's changing up and getting... They got basically a TV spot. They're on Martinsville TV. Mm-hmm. Ring of Honor's doing some... I guess... I mean, if you listen to Jim Cornette, there's shit over there. But um, I don't really watch Ring of Honor. Let's see what else we need to hit on. But new companies coming. Looking out for that. Limitless Wrestling. Fucking... Um, 
Yeah. There's a lot of new wrestling companies. You get on YouTube right now, and you can literally be... Wrestling just companies. Wrestling companies will pour out wrestling to you. You know companies. what I'm saying? Just be wrestling everywhere. Wrestling companies. Wrestling everywhere. companies. Wrestling companies. Uh, <laughs> you just go to www.youtube.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just do that. Oh. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. We gotta look up some things. Releases. Yeah, you wanna go with releases? No. I oh, know we go with uh We talked about good shit. Well, we gotta go into Do we talk about bad shit? I think we have to talk about the deaths now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this segment might get a little sad. So if you don't want to hear about deaths, you can skip along. I don't know how long, but <laughs> We are going to be talking about, at this moment, I want you to like and subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification. In memory bell. of all the wrestlers that we have lost this year. Hit that notification bell ten times. Do the yeah. bell toll, and then make sure that you actually, actually notificate, like, yeah. fully click the notification yeah. bell, but just hit it ten times. So you, you know can what do I can actually do salute. is I can do a ten bell salute in this. <laughs> I can add it in. <laughs> If, if I remember. If I remember. <sighs> yeah, it's like, it's only 26 minutes in. Not bad, guys. So, I mean, this year has been pretty fucking lit, I think. For wrestling, it's been pretty fucking lit, dude. I think. I mean, wait till y'all get, get to the debuts and stuff, you know? All right. So. Wait till we get the debuts, freaking um, releases. I'm to scroll we got the, the best way. of. We got the worst of. We got we got things to talk about, and we definitely got a segment coming up, guys, that y'all are gonna be wanting to listen to, and mm-hmm. it is the controversies, Absolute, rumors, truths, and lies. Absolute Andy, better known as Andreas Ullman. In his actual name. Absolute Andy. Tragically died in his sleep at the age of 40 on November 23rd this year. Oh, wow. I remember hearing about Absolute Andy. Then we had Mike. Mike Hayek. 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 We were going to get him on the show. I was talking to him on Messenger, bro. You remember me talking about the Manator? Or Mentor? Or however you pronounce it? And I was gonna try to get him on, but he he was charging a little too much for our, uh, you know, for our, for what we were comfortable spending. And I, it kind of sucks though if you think about it, man. I wish the fuck I could have paid his price, dude. For real, July, I had to say that, man. I July love you, man. July eleventh, according to his doctor, he, daughter, he died peacefully in his sleep. I love you, Mike Hyatt. Mike it was great Hyatt. talking to you, Third Messenger. Yeah, um, I appreciate like meeting you through, you know, social media. And, and and thanks for even freaking he, 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 he fucking read my message and then replied back to me. He didn't have to do that. So mm. I love you, Mike Hayek. I've always loved that guy. Um, his gimmicks when I was growing up were just great. Like the the Mantar or whatever. Like I loved it growing up. He played a cool ass gimmick. Mm-hmm. Um, he also played uh, a couple other gimmicks as well. Mm. Can't really remember who all though. Then we had he played a legendary wrestling. Oh promoter, shit! Jerry Jarrett. Jerry Jarrett died at age. Is that Jeff 80 Jarrett's dad? On February fourteenth, after battling esophageal cancer. Because Jerry's the same thing as Jarrett, right? Jarrett Jarrett. Jarrett was yeah Jarrett best Jarrett. known for founding the Memphis-based CWA with Jerry the King Lawler. Yeah. Yep. Both a wrestler as well as a promoter. NWA <laughs> in Mid America in 1969. So then we had <coughs> Lanny Poffo. <coughs> Lanny Poffo, which is Macho genius, Man Randy Savage's brother, died at age 68 of congestive heart failure on February 2nd. Did you know that? Macho Man's brother. That news was announced by Hacksaw Jim Duggan on Instagram. Yep. 
Yep, I remember this moment too because I was like, "Man, the damn, time. Lanny Poffitt! Oh my God, that is Randy Savage's brother." Best known in the WWF as Leaping Lanny. Yep, Leaping Lanny, man, he was pretty crazy. The genius territories in the nineteen seventies. Yeah. I liked him. He's the genius. Well, I didn't like him when I was a kid, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, and then draws. This is crazy. This is my fucking childhood right here, bro. WWF and ECW star Darren Draws Draws Doll draws passed away at age fifty four from natural causes on June thirtieth. Yeah, Draws went to the WWF after a career in the NFL. Yep, he's an NFL player. Debuted in nineteen ninety eight. Darren Drosnoff, I love you, brother. You were there for my childhood, like, during, like, some hard times. Like, I appreciate you being there, man. But when we tagged up with the Mosh and Thrash, it was a moment and just a with moment the, in my life. Yeah. And he did some things with Talks the... about Legion of he, Doom. He, he, yeah, he, 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 was, he was the hawk to the animal. You know what I'm saying? Animal needed a new hawk, and he was... He put his own makeup on and did his thing, man. Yeah, he was there for the animal. So, yeah, a mad respect for Draws. And that was even before that, dude. So, mm-hmm. Darren Draws now, I don't know if you can hear me in, wherever you're at in the cosmos. But, yeah, out of this right now, out of the deaths that we're coming on right now, this is the one that hits home. And we ain't even got to the, you know, the one that is going to, like, smacks me every time I even think about it. Mm-hmm. Like, to the ground, hard. Mm-hmm. We've got... Bushwhacker Butch. Yep, we had. Oh man, we had Butch go too. That's another person I grew up watching with his little crazy antics, Bob licking Miller, that dude's best head. Best known as Bushwhacker Butch, died at the age of seventy-eight on April second following a brief illness and a stay in intensive care after arriving in Los Angeles for a WrestleMania appearance. The so Bushwhacker was going to be at WrestleMania, but he died. After a brief illness and stay in intensive care mm-hmm. after arriving in Los Angeles. So he didn't show up for WrestleMania. His death was announced by the daughter of his longtime tag team partner, Bushwhacker Luke, on Instagram. This is why I don't like them calling Pete Dunn Butch. But it's okay if it's an homage to him, but we already had a Butch, man. And superstar Best Billy Butch. Graham. Yep, Billy Star Super. Uh, ugh, I said it all backwards. Superstar Billy Graham. <laughs> take a shot, take a hit. Who passed away at the age of 79 on May 17th, suffered from many health issues for a well over a year before his passing. Liver transplant after being diagnosed with cirrhosis and liver disease. Oh, wow. Yeah. I know. He was very sick. I think I heard about the cirrhosis thing or whatever. Uh, and we had Iron oh, Sheik God passed dang, away. Man. Another childhood guy came. Well, not really that childhood, but he was, I was still watching the tapes. The Iron Sheik. Iron Sheik. Hassan Chasral Ali Vaziri died. I hope I did not butcher that too badly. But died on June 7th at the age of 81. The master of the suplex and the camel clutch and longtime rival of Hulk Hogan and Sergeant Slaughter died peacefully, according to a message posted to his popular ex, the artist formerly known as Twitter, Twitter. account. Sheik made his WWF <laughs> debut in 1979 At the WWE's spiritual home of Madison Square Garden, he left the company numerous times throughout his career, appearing in the WCCW, the AWA, the NWA, and the WCW. I'm not going to read the rest of this. Yeah, you don't have to read all of it. His career is... It's a lot to read. His career spans decades. Like, you can't read it all in one sitting. It's... It's a gist. The Iron Sheik, man. I mean... It's a big deal. Everybody knows... Fuck Hulk Hogan. I love you, man. Love that Iron Sheik, dude. He fucking hated Hogan. And, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't like him because he didn't like Hogan. And then when I get to be an adult, I love him because he doesn't like Hogan. This one's another one. And he one. says, fuck you, Hogan. This, ha, tui. This is, fuck America. Ha, tui. This is going to be another one that's going to smack you. Yeah, man. Damn, man. Damn. This one hit the house, man. This hit my house. This hit, like, my pops. Pops got hit by this one, too. And we had his boy Jay Briscoe. Jay Briscoe. Real man. life name Hamin. Jamie or Jamie. Hamin. Jamie. 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 P U G H. I don't Jamie. want to try. Jamie. It's Jamie. It's Jamie. 
Jamin. Yeah, Jamie. Jamie. Jamin. Jamie. Jamie. Jamie Poo or Pug. I don't want to even try to pronounce the last name because I don't want to. But a legend mm-hmm. in Ring of Honor, Jay Briscoe. Legend. Died at 38 years old, January 17th. Briscoe died in a car accident while driving with his daughters in Delaware. According to the Delaware State Police, a woman driving a truck failed to remain in her lane for unknown reasons and collided with Briscoe's truck head-on. Briscoe was reportedly not wearing his seatbelt and his daughters were hospitalized but survived. 13-time World Ring of Honor World Tag Team yeah. Champions. And also held gold in New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact, Game Changer Wrestling, and more. Jay Briscoe Game Changer is GCW. Made the his ECW of wrestling debut at just 16 years old in May 2000, yep. wrestling with his brother in a Delaware-based promotion. Yep. That one hit me hard because of the age, man. Yep. He's young, dude. Yeah, 34, you know, thinking, like, that's five years older than me, you know what I'm saying, type shit. There's another guy that happened uh, this year that's close to my... Oh, yeah, we're getting close. We're we're getting close. We're getting close. He's actually, I think, my age. We got one before that one. I think he's my age. We got one before that one. Yeah, we got this guy named Terry Terry Funk. Funk. (coughs) Chainsaw Charlie. WWE Hall of Famer Terry Funk is another one that I'm not going to be able to read all of, but I'm no. going to try to give some credit. Summary. Yeah. He's a legend in the hardcore wrestling sphere. Died on August 23rd at the age of 79. The Funker was reportedly wheelchair-bound and badly crippled prior to his death. So he was struggling. Man. I mean, after everything he did to his body. Yeah, man. Funk began his wrestling career in the 60s. That was The Rock creaming Austin. Funk began his wrestling career in the 1960s in a tag team with his brother, Dory Funk Jr. Yeah, the Funkers. He, he broke out as a single stars in the NWA in December 1975. He wrestled, wrestled Jack... <laughs> Rascal, take a shot, take a hit. He b- wrestled Jack Briscoe for the promotion's title. Funk first appeared in the WWF in 1985 and teamed with his brother at WrestleMania II. He also competed in the WCW, where he had a legendary rivalry with Rick, rivalry with Ric Flair, well-known name in all Japan pro wrestling, as well alongside his brother Dory. Like Terry Funk, career that spanned generation after generation, just like the Iron Sheik, forever, dude, yeah. in promotions and, and like every promotion. Yeah. And I think he, if if a promotion held or had carried a hardcore title, he probably held the promotion's hardcore that, title. world titles and stuff of other companies, too. God, man, New Japan was bringing him in because he, the Japan, you know, Japan loves American superstars, and we are enticed by the foreign wrestlers like Okada, freaking Naito, and Takahashi. Takashida. No. Hamoru. Takahashi. Takashida. That's my favorite fucking Japanese guy ever. I love Hamoru. Oh, Takahashi. we can't. We can't not. And, and Naito. To we can't. You, to sue you, Naito. I had to make sure I not going to say not their names. can't not mention. And Kachushka Okada. I think I butchered that. Kachushka. Kachushka. Not take a shit up. Take a shit up. And Takashita. And, and Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura was my first ever favorite Japanese rascaler ever. Rascaler. But. Anyway. And then we've got the premiere. The one that's going to smack you in the face more than anything. That bothers you every time you think about it. It bothers me every day. Every day. Every day, man. Every haunted. Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. And you know Eater what? Eater of worlds. Yeah, I'm just the gonna best let best in the world. I'm just gonna let you do it because you're the you're 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 he's the best. dude, dude. He's the best in the world. I'm I put him above it, like I put him above and beyond, you know, like he's up there with the Undertaker. I mean, he could be better than Undertaker, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I was a kid looking at the Undertaker, you know? And even through my child, my, my, my you know, adult years, I still seen him as the same way I seen him, you know? Um, Bray Wyatt took that and ran with that son of a bitch. Like, made it 
Like, even even bigger than when you thought the Undertaker's already made it big enough. Undertaker, oh, he made the devil bigger than the devil. That, you know, he's the one who made all that evil stuff big. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. That's true. Yeah, I was, he's before Bray Wyatt. Okay, that makes sense. Um, his father was actually around that time period and stuff. So, um, but either way, he's connected to the dark side either way. Through some way or some form of fashion. But Bray Wyatt, I believe, like, did it just as good, if not better, than The Undertakers and all these other guys before him. All these creepy characters. Missing Link. Fucking Christmas Creature, which was Kane. And, um, Uni Bomber, which Kane. And, you know, all these creepy characters. You know, Isaac Yankum and the Creepy Doink. And all these motherfucking creepy characters. But Bray Wyatt, I, I believe... Did it the best, and he took something from Waylon Mercy, the shirt, the pants that he started with, the whole cult leader shit, the whole outfit he wore like that, the floral, whatever it's called, the fucking Hawaiian shirts, and the white pants, and this whole getup is an homage to Waylon Mercy, which only had a, a year stint, really, with the WWF. He was there for a couple of tea, just a couple of beers, a couple of pats on the butt, and he was gone, right? Anyway, so Bray Wyatt took something that someone only had a year with. And it wasn't even the complete same thing. He took the idea. The, the Bray Wyatt could take something like that. Because if you look at it and you know what Waylon Mercy is, and you know who he is, and you've seen everything by him like I have, and you can see the comparisons. You see it in the beginning, the cult leadership. You see it. You can see it. But it's not like... It's an obvious or it's a rip off or anywhere near those realms. It's more of a, you know, what actually happened was Waylon Mercy came to him in training or something like that. And he was there one day and he was talking to Bray Wyatt and he seen what Bray Wyatt is and whatever. And he was telling him stuff and whatever, whatever. And Bray Wyatt took that and created that whole cult leader that you've seen. You know, from there you got burnt fain fain. You got freaking Alexa Bliss bleeding black. You got fucking you got puppets coming to life in human form. You got puppets and you got all this crazy Kevin Powell shit, just crazy ass shit coming out of this man's like fucking mind. The first time, okay, so you know when he did the the, the Mountain Dew. Match with fucking LA night. That makeup that he used, he actually teased that like two years before or something. Years before, like a year or two before. He put that on Instagram or whatever. Or in, or Twitter or whatever. I had that picture for the longest time saved in my phone. You know what I'm saying? Like looking at it like, what is this? You know what I'm saying? It was literally the same thing he did for that match. It was the face of that face. And he had, and this is what I'm talking about. This guy was such a genius that he took genius to another level, okay? And he, now genius has got a whole different bar now that nobody can really compete with, right? It's really hard to compete with this type of genius now because there's a lot of encrypted messages that he put out on Twitter. He used his Twitter for that, for his character and shit as well. And he puts out these encrypted messages that comes like a year later. It comes two years later, but it's all there. Everything that he ever was, was there in the beginning. All the promos, the man in the woods, all this different shit. It all correlates to the one thing that he's been doing the whole time. Everything's connected. The Wyatt Six is all of his characters. Yeah. But he didn't get to all of them. He died before he can get to all of them, you know? That was the worst case scenario right there. Well, it's him dying before he got to all of them. And the Uncle Howdy thing, that was supposed to go even further. I was hoping for Uncle Howdy. The shit I've been seeing on YouTube is fake. <laughs> it's fake. It's not really Bo Dallas doing that shit. It's somebody that's been doing this shit for years. But either way, it was very uh, believable. And I was hoping that Bo Dallas was coming back as a character named Wormwood. I didn't understand the name Wormwood. But yeah, I was like, okay. I was go. Not real. Anyway, so, but see, okay, so this one man, Bray Wyatt, Wyndham Rotunda, has inspired more people than you ever would imagine one person inspiring. 
in that short a uh, time. He was inspiring people before he even thought about the word in his career. Insp inspirational, you know, be even before that. When he was the Ferrari tank back, uh, you know, he dropped in with NXT and shit like that in the beginning days. He was the Ferrari tank, uh, Husky Harris. Uh, I was a fan of him right then and there. I don't know why, but I was. I was. that. You know, people made fun of me, like what, little jokes and shit like you like that. That guy that whatever, and they talk about him, whatever. No, that man's got something, man. I see it before they even see it themselves. You know, it's just it's just something. It's like I don't see it fully, but it's just like, yeah, this guy is just something. I'm getting behind him. CM Punk, debut of CM Punk. When he first came in a long time ago, like, I just knew that's fucking money. It's somebody to look at. It's somebody to look up to. Anyway, Bray Wyatt's very look up, look upable. Very inspirational. Um, wasn't seasonal. You know, you think, you know, in the indies, you know, those type of dark gimmicks are like Halloween, seasonal, you know, like whatever. And that was the same thing with Dan Housen. Like, he, he started, get, he was getting booked for Halloween shows, and he was like, I'm not going to be that guy who just throws this makeup on and does just Halloween shows. This is my shit. Bray Wyatt also embraced that. Um, So with that, yeah, I think that's, I don't want to be here all night talking about Bray Wyatt, but I don't know, man. I thought, when, when he first died, I was like, oh, shit, I quit. Like, I want to quit everything. I don't want to talk about wrestling. I'll do nothing. That's in the moment. But overall, you're like, yeah, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't want anybody to quit what they're, they like to do and passionate about because he never did until he died. Mm -hmm. Get it? So I'm going to do what I'm doing until I die. I'm going to live in that. T I'm, be, I'm just going to stick to what I was doing in the beginning. I'm just going to keep doing what I do until I'm nowhere, no, nowhere can do it no more, you know? Like all most people I look up to. So anyway, we can we're kind of good there. Although there's probably people that are listening right now going, "Oh no, don't 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 stop talking about Bray Wyatt." He, you know, I know he's the greatest. He is the best in the world. Literally took CM Punk's spot a long time ago. It's crazy because he wasn't wrestling. So it was why I have someone on a pedestal when he doesn't wrestle mm -hmm. in in that form of pedestal. He should just be like the best person ever, not best wrestler ever. You know what I'm saying? I should have changed that title a long time ago. But whatever. Bray Wyatt is the best and always will be the best. Better than all the rest. Kiss my ass, I, locker room, I don't give a fuck. Okay? He's literally the greatest of all time. Literally. The GOAT. Like, fucking better than Undertaker, better than Kane. Going on a tangent. Stop me while I'm going. Because he's better than John Cena, CM Punk. Bray Wyatt's better than Ric Flair. That's definite. All of them. Okay. Top death of this year that I wish didn't happen. Bray Wyatt. Actually, top death in any year of wrestling deaths. If I had those Dragon Balls from Dragon Ball Z... And I had to wish back one wrestler that died in the history of deaths. Bray Wyatt. Hands down. Sorry, I'm so sorry, Macho Man. But, you know, like, I think a lot of people probably agree with me with that. Because, like, with a lot of the big, you know, hits you right in the fucking face. Like, you feel like you got beat up because you just heard about that death. This guy died around my age. You know what I'm saying? Most deaths you hear are... It was going to happen eventually. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not trying to sugarcoat that or, or say that lightly or whatever, but I'm just saying, like, oh, most of the time it's 80, 90 years old, 70, whatever. And, you know, you know, it's like, okay, we knew that was coming, but when, you know? But someone that's in their 30s, like Bray Wyatt and fucking, fucking uh, Jay Briscoe, it's like, whoa, dude. You know what they could be doing right now? That's my gripe with the world. What they can be doing right now. But you know what? We're not going to be, you know, focused on that. We're focused on the future. And that was the whole gist of that. Going into the future of what we're going to be hitting in. And we're going to go into. Are you editing the 10 Bell Salute in before or after this? 
We are going to actually take a... I'm going to do it right now. So... We're back. Um, we're going to go into new parents. We have to look that up as well. Mm-hmm. New parents. Like and subscribe like always. Like and subscribe. Notification bell. We're going to be doing some big stuff this year. Sorry about the tangent. Wasn't really a tangent. I just miss my best friend that I never met. Okay. My, you know, how people have the spirit animal. I have a spirit human, okay? A spirit human. Damn it. And he's literally a spirit human now. That's my gripe on that. So, you know, 2023 almost sucked, you know, but we can't fucking harp on just, you know what I'm saying? But 23, it's good. It's good. It's good. We had one thing that almost, I mean, it, it, it fucked it up for a good minute. I mean, it still is fucking it up, but it's always well, okay. It's okay. We, we transition now from losses to, to new, new parents, life. new life, parents of twenty twenty three. Ten wrestlers who became new parents. parents. Yeah, that's fine. And then we'll go into marriage and probably divorce in twenty twenty. <laughs> We have Alexa We're going Bliss. all up in y'all's lives. Alexa boy. Bliss gave birth to a girl in November. Yes, she year. did. I just seen that baby, too. Hendrix Alexa Bliss, congratulations. Rose Cabrera. Yeah, Cabrera. She married that artist, uh, her musician, name, Cabrera. Uh, her birthday is November 27th. November 27th, cool. Um, baby girl. Jesse McKay became a mother in December. Oh, that's one of the uh, iconic. Jesse McKay, the name of the kid is Cooper, and their birthday was December 20th. Awesome. Well, happy birthday. Tay Conti. Tay Conti. Yes, Sammy Guevara, baby. Yeah, that happened. Parents in November as well. Yes, sir. They gave birth to a little girl, Luna Malo Guevara. No way do they name their daughter Luna. And she was That's my daughter's on name on November 28th. Them some bitch is stealing my baby's name. Corey Graves and Carmella. Oh, Carmella. Their first child in May. Awesome. Carmella gave birth to Dimitri Paul Polinsky. Oh, man. A little baby boy on November 8th. Let me be that Mark and think that Corey Graves' his last name is really Graves. Zach Gibson announced the birth of his son, Robin. Zach Gibson, congratulations to you. Wrestler that had a baby, Zach Gibson. Name of the kid, Robin, R-O-B-Y-N. Birthday, October 18th. Kelly Kelly. Oh, yay, Kelly Kelly. Gave birth to twins in September. Twins? I don't care. Kelly Kelly, the children's names were Brooklyn and Jackson. No, their names were I don't and care. Look, just because you don't <laughs> like Kelly Kelly doesn't mean you have to hate on the babies. The babies are fine. I have Brooklyn no hate with the babies. And J A X S O N. I agree with that. Jackson, I like that. Burn, born They're September my children. 10th, 2023. Cassie Lee and Sean Spears welcomed their son Austin in June. Oh, Cassie Lee, she's um freak. I know that. Austin J. Arnell, born January eight seventeenth. Carl Anderson became a father for the fifth time in awesome. October this year. That's part of the OC with Luke Gallo. Carl Anderson is the wrestler Coast Rocky Allegra. Born October 30th. Rush became a father on Father's Day. Oh, Roosh. 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 He is Dragon Lee's brother. The wrestler Roosh. Name of the kid is unknown. Born on June 18th. 
and Tyler Breeze Ooh. announced the birth of his child in a YouTube video. Awesome. Tyler Breeze. Um, the birthday is unknown. Or just Breeze. And the name of the kid is unknown, but Tyler it's Breeze, Breeze had a baby. His baby's name is Breeze. No, his name's going to be Tyler Breeze, whatever. So he actually has copyrights to his name. Through his baby. You know what I'm saying? And then he can actually be called Tyler Breeze wherever he goes. It's a good, good, good deal, dude. Do that. No, I'm just playing. This baby's probably breezy. Kazawa and his wife welcomed the baby girlier earlier this month. The one with the nasty dance. That boy be killing it on dance. I mean, he's good, sick boy. Tozawa, good, good. Uh, for, uh, Peyton Royce and Ty Peyton Royce, another iconic. No way, two in iconics January. in one year. Both iconics had and babies. Kelly Kelly, of course. Yeah. Well, Kelly Kelly. Well, Kelly Kelly had some babies, and um. That's probably about the best thing she did for wrestling is put out some babies. Because um, she did not do a good job for the wrestling business. So, we're good on that. All right. So, marriages, I guess. Who got married this year? WWE marriages. Yeah. Engagements. Or just like wrestling, wrestling. marries. Yeah. Like marriages. Wrestling. Might get some fake ones mixed in, but I don't think we had any yeah, this year. Geez. Like and subscribe. If you want to donate, like a dollar. Not kayfabe. You can't. Dollar to... Ten wrestlers who got married in 2023 and engaged in 2023. That's fine. Let's go with it. Ten. Buddy Matthews. Buddy and Matthews Rhea and Ripley Rhea Ripley. Got an engagement. Crushing ring. kayfabe right now. Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley are not dating you marks. Buddy Matthews was previously engaged to Alexa Bliss. Yes, they were back in their heyday. Yep. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan getting remarried. Got remarried. To Sky Daly. Sky Daly. She hot. They revealed their relationship in 2022. That is ridiculous. Hogan, you can suck one. Two tall, two time Hall of Fame. Two tall. Two Hogan. tall Hogan. Hulk Hogan <laughs> was married two times before. <laughs> Woo, fuck you, Hogan. has two children. Fuck you. Logan Paul. Logan Paul, yeah, proposed boy. Proposed to his girlfriend, Nina, yep. Nina Agdale. He did. He did. Let's go. That's better than Hogan. Omos. Omos. Rock what? Out with his wife, Cheyenne Quayley, this year. Omos. They have been in a relationship she is for really small over compared to him. a decade for 10 years. Damn. He he's went, a very, he went not he's very, a very large so. man. Yeah, he's huge, man. He's like the biggest wrestler we've ever had. Omos's wife is a doctor. Hell yeah. And they've been together for over a decade. Congratulations. Samantha Irvin. Hell yeah, and, Samantha Irvin. Uh, Ricochet got engaged. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's the uh, ring announcer. Yeah, she, she's the ring announcer. Yep. She does a great job. Jimmy said I do to Gunther. What? Oh, Jenny. <laughs> Jenny <laughs> said I do to Oh, Jenny. Oh, my God, Jenny. She is so small. If you see, uh, you see a picture of them together, look how small she is compared to him. Okay, so she wrestled in this one company that I watched a lot. And then she was like NXT or something so as well. I can't believe Jenny I remember. Jenny and Gunther got married. Okay, so she is super fucking, you see her? She I is like a twig. She is so skinny. She is like, I'm not making fun of her. Or, she was released. I'm talking about compared to him. He is. Really? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, well I've not seen her on TV unless she was going by another she name. She retired from wrestling due to a concussion. Okay, so she is like okay. So I'm comparing the sizes of her and Gunther because Gunther is massive. Okay, she is like like AJ Lee. Like she's like Kelly Kelly. Like she but actually she's smaller than both of them. Jenny, like I saw her go through tables by men. Okay, mm. she didn't care. That genderless, that was the word I was looking for earlier. Genderless. Mm. Yeah, genderless. She, gen she don't give a fuck your gender. She'll fucking fight you. And I've seen her go through quite a few fucking tables. Emma. And one of them was Sammy Callahan doing it. And I he is the an death machine. I saw woman go through a table. Yeah, me too. When I was a kid. <laughs> With Bubba Ray. <laughs> but Sammy Callahan, yeah, Bubba Ray was, okay, so you get what I'm saying. Sammy Callahan's up that level, but he is ten times what Bubba Ray was, hardcore-wise. Sammy Callahan is called the Death Machine. Okay. Bubba Ray was called du, 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 Dudley. Dudley. Emma said yes to Riddick Moss. Riddick Moss and Emma. That's right. Okay, so this Riddick was, Moss proposed okay, to Emma. Okay, so for all you marks 
out there, like I was doing. I was like, oh shit, this is cute. I wonder if they're really together. Like, I didn't think about it. I thought it was just like character and shit. Well, they were hinting around to this shit on TV, dude. On TV. Both of them were backstage on TV. They meant for it all to be televised, of course. And it was being hinted that they were together. But we, the Marks, thought that um, that was kayfabe. That was kayfabe. That was fake, fake, whatever. But we were also in our heads like, oh, that they make a good couple look. They look like they wouldn't be together. And they're actually together. So Riddick Moss and Emma, you son of a bitch, Riddick Moss, dude. I was liking you too. I, I do like you, but solo. Sakura. I like you. Oh, here's some Bray White stuff here. I do like you, Riddick, but that was my girl. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to meet her one year at WrestleMania. I tell you this story all the time, and it's because that goddamn. Was it Kelly Kelly? No. I was trying to meet Emma, and it was uh, Summer Rae. Even worse. Even worse than Kelly Kelly. I know. You can get worse than Kelly Kelly. Summer Rae. Okay. The girl got, man, the girl was just not not happening, okay? So I, I didn't meet Emma. I'm sorry, Emma. You can blame that on fucking Summer Rae. Solo Sakula. Exchange vows. So low. With Almia Williams. They have two children together. There we go. Solo's the man, dude. Dominic Mysterio. Dominic Mysterio, you say it. engaged to Marie Juliet. Yep. They have been All dating. you marks. She's not dating Rhea Ripley. They have been dating since they were children. Mm-hmm. Dominic Mysterio is one of the best heels today. Yeah, I guess On screen, so. he is in a relationship with Rhea Ripley. Yeah. He has been with his Weird fiance one. since high school. Since they were high school sweethearts. Yeah, it's cute. Bring Sonia up. Deville asked her girlfriend, Tony Cassano, to marry yep. her. Awesome. Dating since 2019. Yep. That's the girl that she's been with this whole time. Like, uh... Sonia Deville started liking Cassano when she was in a different relationship. Oh yeah, okay. Never mind. That wasn't one before this. Deville a DM after her breakup, and they started talking. Deville is currently inactive in the WWE yeah. roster. Kind of sad there, because I like Sonya Deville a lot. All right, so I guess we got to go with divorces. We got Divorce Court coming up next, guys. Stay tuned. We love you guys. Should we take a quick break? Yeah. Let's do that. All right, guys. We will literally be back in a minute. You will never know we even left. All right. We're so back three we're hours back. later. Three hours later. We couldn't find anything about divorces, but then Kyle Not brought, really three hours attention, later, brought back to our attention 2023 divorces, Andrade Cien Lamas, and Charlotte Flair. Yes. I'm surprised y'all didn't know that. I was just looking up this divorce stuff, and I ran across something about Charlotte and Andre. Which I don't know if they've officially divorced. Yeah. But I know they've definitely something separated. Though. Separated. I feel like we're going into controversies and stuff, but... Um, uh, yeah. That's kind but of... But that's later. Yeah. So, so, then we wanted to bring Kyle into the podcast to tell us what he remembers from what he's been watching since, me I guess, and, August. Uh, okay, so to be honest, me and Joe kind of like, we, we, we went in like we were supposed to and we, we people will say, jumped the gun a little bit. If we would have waited a little bit, we could have did, yeah. maybe the, we, we would have did the whole thing as a, a three-man pod, right? Right. But we needed to go ahead and get a head start. Blah, blah, blah. But we got Kyle in here now. Which, y'all didn't know I was coming. And then we didn't know he was coming at all. We're sitting here. We literally, y'all know this. We just took a break just before we just came back yeah. on. Y'all know that because I said it. Right. And from that point, you know, to now, we finished up watching AEW uh, World's End and stuff. Yeah. And Kyle had just got here and shit. And so, it, you know, we were late on the pay-per-view. Right. We were an hour late on the pay-per-view. We were just, yeah. you know, whatever. But... I, my main focus was in in end of the year review, right. but either way, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, let's get into this. We're thing. back, yeah, we and are. now like and subscribe. We're gonna let Kyle take the fill floor. us in on what he knows about the wrestling world in 2023 from August to now. Yeah, so as the two of y'all know, but maybe the listeners don't know, is I've been a wrestling fan for over 20 years. 
but I've been very off and on for a lot of those years. And I've been more off than on <laughs> until about August. And I don't know what changed. I just, like, I, I went to see the SummerSlam pay-per-view with some friends of mine. Which year? This year. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's Yeah, in awesome. August. That was the one that was... Jey Uso versus Roman Reigns. Uh, it was the main event. Jay. Yeah. And Roman. Yeah, and I just kind of just started watching it. And Jimmy came in and super kicked Jay. That was... Yeah, hmm. that was SummerSlam. Okay, okay, okay. And, like, before then, I mean, like, I watched WrestleMania with y'all. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And Once in a Blue Moon, I'm I've like... I've been trying to get you on anyway for, for a minute. Yeah. Once in a Blue Moon, I might see what's going on on Raw or whatever, but I really didn't keep up with it at all until yep. about August. And then just like just like that, I just watched it pretty much every week. Mainly, like, WWE or on SmackDown, but then I slowly started just seeing what AEW is up to, yeah. seeing what Impact is up to. Uh, but it's been nice. Just, like, getting back into, like, a lifelong interest of mine. Uh, it's been fun. And the things that stuck out to me is both Seth Rollins and Gunther and their reigns and their oh, defenses yeah. and their matches. Yeah. I mean, that's true. That's have been true. very impressive. Uh, yeah. Chad that's Gable. wild because Gunther did all this before the WWE existed yeah. in his life. You know this. Yes. And, right? I, knew, I, knew and I know f- this, right? His history. The same championships, but world titles. Okay? Yeah. So it was a little different in some of these other companies, but this man was doing this shit before WWE. So I'm sorry about that, but Gunther is my... I'm so high on that motherfucker. Me too. But his match was Chad Gable. Oh, that. one of my favorite I matches. Like, I like Gable a lot. I yeah. like him because he's like a traditional Rick Steiner. Like back in the day, yeah, you know when they wore the colorful shit. That's yeah. where he's getting all this shit. Oh, like, uh, like, the, like that's where his the wrestling came from. Kurt Angle. back to uh, of yeah. collegiate wrestling, world's greatest tag team. Yeah, yep. Charlie Hall. Yep. yep, yep. They have a lot of comparison him and Jason Jordan. Yeah, not Otis so much. But. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, uh, Otis, Otis looks like a bigger version of Jimmy Love. So. I like Otis because he's good comedic relief. And I will say... I love Otis. I will say... I fucking love Otis. I will say, I am getting a little questionable on the, the part with addition of Tazawa. No, his and little, his his little his nasty... nasty his little, little nasty, nasty dance. dance he's got. Yo. Yo, bring that to the oh, next year. Bring that to the next year. Oh, that's oh. nasty. That's nasty. I love it, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with Tazawa. Yeah, Maxine Dupree. You know, okay, so, okay, so this is gonna I know fucking, you're not super this is gonna up. kill Tazawa real quick, but this is the best shit Tazawa's did in like a couple of years. Now. I mean, he's just been creeping. And he's and, just dancing. He's just doing this yeah. weird he's little, this little last, shuffle back and forth, for bro. Year. And it's the best thing. His wrestling shit is great and on Dude. par. They just don't want to show what Tazawa's got. For the last he he year, came they from Japan, for Christ's sake. For anything. They haven't booked him for anything. I know. Nothing big. And nothing is worth it. They're not getting him over. They're getting him over through a fucking dance that Daniel Garcia is doing on AEW right now. Not even the same dance, but in the same four fucking mat. That's not no pun on my fucking podcast either. But I'm going on a fucking tangent right now. It's Sting and... It's just weird. Well, they they needed the place for Tazawa because they killed the cruiserweight division. I think that's fucked up, though, because Tazawa... He comes from Japan, right? All the Japanese wrestlers that WWE or any big promotions over here in America would want are top tier talent from Japan promotions. New Japan from what? Who the fuck we got right now? That's down to fuck over Cody doing the the Muda shit. Shinsuke. Shinsuke. Oh Christ Almighty, Nakamura. Okay, the 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 Christ of fucking. New Japan Pro Wrestling, right. like one of the greatest of that promotion of all time. Okay, so and they're 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 using these guys, certain guys like shit. They're even doing Nakamura like that. He is like I just said it that Jesus Christ, the fucking New Japan Pro Wrestling. They're finally person. giving him his due, though. Jesus I, Christ, not the fucking Okada. Yeah, I get it. He's the Rock of New Japan. I get it, but goddamn, Nakamura was way better. You got Naito. You got Takahashi, my boy, Hamoru Takahashi. Oh, my God. You seen that motherfucker? Oh, man. The time bomb 
Ah, look him up, guys. Takashita. No, not no Takashita. <laughs> He's good, yeah, though. I, I, I keep murdering his name. You got to blame Jim Cornette Takashita. for it. It's Jim Cornette's fault. But well, well, um, so much he calls him Takashita, yeah. you know. But I'm telling you, Hamoru Takahashi. Look him up, folks. He's fucking fantastic. The time bomb over there in New Japan. Anyway, I'm getting off topic because now we're talking about Japan. Yeah. But Nico, cured this out. It's on the it's on the subject. It's getting misused. This yeah, little dance is misused. nasty. No, it's nasty. No, well, it's I, nasty. I don't think it's getting it's misused. Because, it's because they have made us made us believe that shit's nasty. It is nasty though. It is nasty though. I don't think it's getting misused because if he, if he wasn't in Alpha Academy, what would he be doing? Alpha, you know, he would Alpha be Academy creeping. is shit. For the last year, he's been creeping in the background in the Alpha Academy the shadows, is shit, dude. Just with I do not like Alpha bleach Academy. Bleach blonde hair, just chilling in the background at every random thing. Yeah, just popping up here and there. He hasn't been doing anything. Yeah, our truth. <coughs> he is literally like now. That's genius. Our truth. But R Truth is doing more now. R Truth just needs to do a tag team by himself. fucking self. He'll be more over than Chad Gable and Otis. Yeah, but I, th- I think Otis went in the briefcase. I think Tazawa's that pissed in a good me place. off. But Come on different. now, that's back in the day, dude. Come on now, I can't wipe that grease off my face, dude. Look, that is paint you can't get off, dude. That is permanent marker. That's not coming off for like three weeks. Otis, fuck. And that OT shit, fuck that shit too. But that is not this year. We're no, totally not talk going about to this Alpha year. Academy. Maxine Dupree. I, you will say she's just a pretty face. Kelly Kelly, whatever. Yeah, but Kelly Kelly girl. She's trying to be a wrestler. Yeah, she's learning. She's no, trying. She's, she's trying to be a Thea Hill, and Thea Hill does that fucking shit way better. She's trying to wrestle. Thank God for At Thea least Hill. She's trying. Yeah, right. Thea Hill, keep it up. And guess what? Like Thea Hill in the when beginning. she wrestled, when Ivy Nile and oh, her wrestled yeah, together, Ivy Nile. they looked to, they yeah. look, they look good. Well, let me interject. We like, are talking about the goddess of uh, professional wrestling right now, the Ivy Nile and the, uh, the fucking Shayna Baszler. And man, we get some like good back into we get some, it. We got some good female um, wrestlers in um um. We got Ivy Nile. Sure. Yeah. We got yeah, Ivy like, Nile. Getting back into wrestling, it's been fun. To, I'm sorry about that. Being acquainted to uh, the new guard coming up, so you mentioned Ivy now, Creed mm-hmm. Brothers. Yeah, I don't know, really. I'm not really. They're good. I like them, but uh, they too. I like the Creed Brothers. Well, the the older brother uh, went to Duke University, so you know North North Carolina roots, just like me. Okay, so cool. I'm, oh, yeah, I'm feeling that. Uh, and then a lot of the women wrestlers that I didn't know before I started watching again, um, Indy Hartwell. Indy Hartwell, I like her a lot. Yeah, she's and, yeah, she's 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 dude. Let me tell you that she's she's good. And um, then on the AEW side, Sky Blue, uh, Chris Statlander. Yep, yeah. people like I know they've been wrestling a while, but this is my yeah. first exposure to them. Uh, so it's been fun getting to know a lot of the new wrestlers uh, coming up and just knowing their story. So that's yeah. been fun. Did you was you watching <clears throat> during any of the Bray Wyatt stuff? Well, I did. Like, I remember watching the like, Rumble. Like, uh, the, the Fun House or anything like that? Yeah. I, I was always kept in the loop, you know, because I, yeah, I know a friend of mine was. kept up with it. I swear, if you weren't a wrestling fan and you glimpse that, you might be just into puppets. Like, my kid. He was just into puppets and stuff. Like, he was into that creepy macabre shit. Yeah. And, and Bray Wyatt captivated him, you know what I'm saying? So shit like that uh, could either start you a fan, or shit like that. Yeah. So and, and and that didn't bring you back. I think that was definitely the biggest loss of this year. Oh I think yeah, y'all definitely. Already talked about it. So but, when when did you come? You said in August you came back around. Was you was you watching any of the um? Did you see any of the cult stuff that he was doing with the um the shirt and the white I don't pants? Think so. And the, the only thing I remember is Luke like Harper. I know he, he wrestled LA Knight this oh, yeah. year. Yeah. He saw the the dark match, pitch black okay. match. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to dive into that for just a second. I'm done with that. But yeah, that match was good. LA Knight with the uh the, the uh was that this year? Yeah. It was Royal Rumble. 
The Mountain Dew thing? Yeah. That was this year? Wow. Yeah. We haven't actually talked January, about that the whole time. But it was this year. <laughs> we, didn't talk, we haven't talked about that at all. I forgot that matches. match we happened this year. We haven't gotten over the matches yet. We haven't talked oh, about Oh, yeah, we haven't yet. gotten to the best, worst matches of this year, yeah. And I guess for some opinions, that one would be the worst match. And really, hmm. like... I've already match got my worst quality. match picked out. <laughs> Mal- match quality was it well, wasn't anything Bray or CM Punk it was, was in. Not fest, gonna be like, it. I mean, it just was what it was. Because like. there, there's no bad matches that either one of those guys have done. CM Punk, Bray Wyatt, I can justify both of that. There's no bad matches they've done. No. If they're bad, it's because of the other person. <laughs> it's all the other person's fault. I am not brainwashed. You hear well, me? I think CM Punk's a smiling man. Aid. I do Punk's drink aid. CM Punk's Pepsi Man Cola, which he does not drink anymore. Which I don't drink any anymore. Well, I do drink Pepsi. It doesn't matter. CM Punk doesn't drink Pepsi. He doesn't drink Pepsi no more. Oh. Yes, he came out with that. I think this year or he came last out year. Of the calls that was not like that. drinking Pepsi. He yeah. drinks Coke now. No, he doesn't drink. <laughs> 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 Funny, but not true. He doesn't drink any soda. Mm. Yeah, so I don't. I try to. And don't go based off that movie he was in because he does not smoke weed and he does not drink beer because that was just a movie, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the movie and he drank beer and he smoked the fucking marijuana. Mm. Okay, and I did not like that. He's going, man, it was horrible. It was just like that Chris Jericho moment oh. when Chris Jericho poured all that liquor on fucking CM Punk. Got it in all of his mouth and <laughs> shit. And if it was real liquor and shit, holy fuck. If I was CM Punk, I would have busted a whole bottle of something over Jericho's head backstage. Yeah. I'm straight edge, motherfucker. Anyway, stop talking about CM Punk. Yeah. Look, I love CM Punk. I oh, got yeah. I got the stars on my elbows to prove it. Oh, we talking about returns now? Is that what we're doing? And what are we doing now? Okay, so we got everything we need to be doing, right? Spot Fest. Spot Fest. Oh, Kyle's one Kyle's. one more shout out. I want yes. I want to get is like keeping up with Impact Wrestling. I want to give a shout I'm, out to Mike Bailey. Mike Speedball Bailey. Mike Bailey. Yes, I uh, love him. I'm sure he's been around a while, but first exposure. He does this, this crazy year. fucking thing with his like. He does this flipping thing. He lands with his knees on your stomach and he shit. He can wrestle. Yeah, uh, an incredible psycho. match with, with Will Ospreay. Yes, I, I heard about Murray. it. Yeah, you were me and you were talking about that that one night. Um, so like I was saying earlier in the pod though, Kyle. Is that um, I'm going to be watching TNA more. So, if you can, watch TNA. Because yeah. uh, the first episode of TNA of this year, I'm reviewing it. I'm looking forward to this. Either or. or I, it's either going to be a format or a highest fuck podcast. I'm doing it. It could be a fucking format with a special guest, too. Or it could be a highest fuck podcast. It doesn't matter. You know what that means? That means you're not involved. When it's a format with a special guest, you're not involved. Huh? I don't know what that means. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're go- <laughs> like I-, I was just getting to it because we're g- we're going to the- this year. Yeah. And I said like we're different. I'm actually glad we have another person because that gives yeah. me an opportunity when I can. You can fuck off. To fuck off. That's a good analogy, right? <laughs> Without being offensive. Good. I like that. See, that's why you, my boy, bro. Because. That, Sometimes I need permission that, to fuck off. That 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 <laughs> analogy I just said fuck off as you were gonna about to say it. I knew you were about to say it, but that whole type of dynamic doesn't happen much. And that's that's like fighting words or some shit. But no. Anyway, there are times that I have husbandly you, duties that I need you, to do. You need to. And Kyle will have hus- you need to uh, fuck off. Boyfriendly duties that he. Then there's gonna times he's gonna fuck off and do his shit. We just like using the word fuck off. Fuck off. Yeah. It's a good analogy, man. You can do whatever you want to and you're fuck off. You know what I'm saying? But more the merrier Maybe too. Maybe you'll be more inspired to do just more formats and I will I've been doing like some formats, but you know, and and that is where I got that comment, the best podcast ever. Right, because you're better than me. You shut your hell up. <laughs> because us together I'm makes fucking with you. You dude. know it because we've heard it from other people. That our fucking 
camaraderie and our fucking dynamic no, and our connection I'm and our fucking you, dude. all that shit. We heard it from Jay because he listens to our podcast. Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. If you're listening. We mm. love you. So, anyway, our friend listens to... Uh, we got people that listen to us that actually know us in real life. Okay? Hulk Hogan, dude. Not to scare you. Or NWO Hulk Hogan. Anyway, so where are we going now? Hulk Hogan got married this year. Hogan <laughs> did get married this year. Okay, there, so there's some spot WWE fest. 2K23 in the background. That's yes, that's my on. my channel. Look my plate. <laughs> yeah. Gaming, go and subscribe. I've got like 362. Got Hulk Hogan getting ready to come out here and fight. Dude. Oh yeah, what's this match? This is a NWO fun. White Hulk Hogan with is a ladder the, match. Is this the full show? Oh, it's a uh, Money in the Bank. I think. Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, it's this Thunder Full Show. Oh, okay. It's the end of it. So, yeah, it is a Money to Make type deal, but it's for the title. Cool. And it's got Mortis and Canyon, which so, is crazy seems because a bit Mortis. Much for WCW Thunder, don't you think? Yeah, it's a little <laughs> much. But, no, what's much about it is Canyon and Mortis are the same person. And they're in the Ooh. same match. That's what's insane like about this. But, faces of Foley but maybe, maybe I'm searching for a comment saying. Damn, Chris and Oh Canyon. No and, continuity, dude. Well, Canyon and Mortis are the same guy. This yeah. is weird. Like no AEW. comments. Like AEW. Like AEW. No there was no, there was no comments on it. No comments on it. No one said, "Oh, what the fuck, dude?" Like I would have come back at him saying, "I know what I'm doing. I dude. know Chris Canyon is Mortis, dude. I'm the guy that's the expert." Over All here. right. Along the sides of another guy that is so smart mm-hmm. in wrestling. Mm-hmm. What do you call that? You say it was a savant. A savant. <laughs> yeah. That's a great word, dude. I need to use that as an album name. Savant. Mm. Anyway, we are going to spot fest you because we are going into spot fest season. It was spot spot monkeys, fest. Dog. Okay, so the. Uh, well, we ain't well, we going to do deaths because you. Man, I feel, I feel, a lot of them. We covered deaths. Okay, so new, new wrestling promotions. We'll go with that one because uh, Deadlock Pro Wrestling. I want y'all to start watching it a little bit because I, I kind of want to, um, you know, do, where the, best stuff do the damn thing. Uh, man, I can't remember exactly where they're at, okay. but I know that Chris Danger, that's his wrestling name. Mm-hmm. That's his like fake name too on wrestling because he did wrestling videos like I do on the gaming channel. His okay. name, Chris Dank, uh, what's it called? Dank, uh, what's it called? Dankin or something? Chris Dankin or something on the YouTube or something? And so, he's a YouTuber made into a wrestler. It's kind of crazy. But anyway, so he's a part of the company. He's like, his first match he's trying to have with Adam Cole, actually. So, and he's going to have a match with Adam Cole. He's DDP going to just have a match won the title, Cole. dude. Yeah, DDP won this match. <laughs> Chris Canyon and Mortis. Wild. If, you're, if, you know what you, if you know you're wrestling, you know that it's the same person twice in there. It's like one of those mirror matches or some shit. Um, so, Spot Fest. Spot Fest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was talking about DB, DBW, Deadlock Pro. We got, Deadlock Pro um, you know, Ring of Honor. I mean, they're still fucking fairly new, being re-owned and shit like that. NWA is still getting it. Billy Corgan. Yeah, Billy Corgan over there with the Smashing, uh, the Smashing Pumpkin guy. Yeah, I'm trying to keep up with that a little bit. Yeah, well, I'll, I'm trying to do OVW as well. Like there's yeah. so many. I was having a hard YouTube. time finding OVW. Yeah, I know. I've been. I've been, I'll watch a lot of shit. And this is why he, he keeps saying the format, and I know this because I watch so much shit. That, you know how many format shit have already came out. Already? I know you just don't keep doing it. Yeah, I don't do that like I was doing. But hell, I can't help that I like camaraderie and an extra voice. I, I understand that, but I'm it's just so saying, much better to me. And you, I know people like my Val Venus to have fucking more thing. shows more often. Then I need you to do things that don't. I don't know. Me. Oh shit, we're gonna get copyrighted. Oh shit, it's Jim Cornette. <laughs> we'll get copyrighted in the heart free. His everything right. Jim Cornette owns is damn copyrighted. Spot fest he might Kyle. even copyright me for. We were uh, doing promoting him. promotions, new promotions. No, what was we just talking about? Because I was gonna hit OVW. Him I was going to hit on something. OVW. OVW. NWA. NWA. Billy Corrigan. Billy Corrigan. YouTube. YouTube. Now, I done lost where I was at now. Shit. New promotions, dude. Yeah, well, that just fucking threw me the fuck off. <laughs> you got dude. thrown off by Jim Cornette. Yeah, because I was about to get damn strike. 
Anyway, his whole voice is copyrighted. Copyrighted. The copyrights of this year. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a doozy. All right. All right. Well, I was saying it was like OVW. 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 I would like to watch more of that. You yeah. know, do more MLW outside. MLW has been an MLW. I yeah. That was a friend of mine. I love some MLW. Now I have done some formats. That's what we were talking about. The format. Okay. So like there, like yeah, I get it. I should do more of them. And I, I kind of trying to lean to do them more. You know what I'm saying? I was just trying to push it. I need it. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, I've gotten, you know, some good love there. Because, like, I was going to say, okay, so people like my Valvinus thing that I do on my show by myself. They like my Valvinus thing. So, it's all right. I'm just like, and welcome to, and then I pause. The format. I mean, that's where I got with your boy, <laughs> with your boy, Matt Jackson. It used to be, and welcome to the must see show or must hear show on YouTube, baby. The format. You know, it used to be all this. I stole that shit from uh, the Miz and some and and Adam Cole. To make my intro in the first beginning, but it's all evolved. You know what I'm saying? But I, if, you know, I get I heard, it. I get it. People love my intro when I'm when I sound like Valvinus, and I didn't know it until that man said or whoever said it, man, woman, yeah. And that's what and uh, welcome to that's the format yeah, that's with your boy. I, and sometimes I'll be like, and you thought I was gonna say something else, which people be thinking I'm saying the highest fuck right now. You know what I'm saying? I've I've done some formats. To where I was like, and welcome to the format. I bet you thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? And I would say that right after my intro. And I, I, I like it. And then I got a comment saying that this person loved my Val Venus sounding ass. So I, I didn't say it like that, <laughs> but I put it with the ass word. But he said he liked my Val Venus sounding stuff. And I was like, I never thought of, that I sounded like Val Venus until... Yeah. They said it, and I was like, okay. Didn't he have a podcast? I think. Himself? They all do, don't they? Most of them. Disco Inferno and Conan have one. <laughs> and he harassed me. I don't. Okay, I'm we're. i to you not to say it. Okay, we're. Okay, okay, okay. Can Matt Jackson in this year that we're talking about without talking about Conan harassing me? <laughs> Can we go into 2024 Can, without Matt Jackson what, talking what about that's harassing a new, me? That's a New Year's resolution for 2024 is Matt I don't bring it up again. is not going to talk about Conan harassing him. Well, we got to inform... God damn it. We got to inform, <laughs> inform Kyle over here. <laughs> that, doesn't matter. We have All to, of 2000. This is the last time. I have time. not heard... I have not stopped hearing of this. Oh, my All God. of 2023. Jesus for fuck. forever. I got the messages to prove it. We're doing plugging. We're plugging... All the podcasts. I plug him all the goddamn time, bro. At the beginning of every show, we right. plug all the podcasts. Yeah. That's fucking And it. I have said Disco Inferno and Conan. Yeah. We can never remember. Sometimes I'm, we I'm, can't remember. It's I'm a, like, I'm a like, hundred, what's the name of their show, their show? And that's something. like the harassers. Because he can't <laughs> ever remember what the name of their show is. It's the hundred Conan, something. Conan messaged him like two times or three times. Two times on Twitter. Three times. That is about not, no. watching his show. No, he messaged me not even just on that fucking account, on another account as well. It was the highest fuck podcast account and the wrestling mat podcast because somehow so, for some reason I wanted to separate two like, fucking things. Hey bro, hey bro, hey, have you watched Check, our have you show? Seen it? Have, you seen, have it? you seen it? And then have I'm playing it back. Yes, I watch you know So I, Conan. Conan, the legendary K Dog. Yes. Lay Bato. Sent you a DM. Yeah. On, on Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Multiple times. Yep. On wow. 100 proof. Pr- 100 proof or whatever the fuck it's called. Something like that. About if he had watched their show. Mm-hmm. Disco and Conan's show. Keeps promoting his shit like every, every so often. Like, I don't know if it was like every day or whatnot for that week or whatever. But, yeah. but it was felt. It, is that our claim to fame at this moment? At the moment, <laughs> I got that. And I've got <laughs> a couple. I got some friends. 
and high and low. We got some good interviews. We do. And those are really friends of mine. Yeah. The, interv- I think, I the interviews are friends of mine, except for like John Washington. I didn't really know him until that night. Interviews. Charles, that really Charles Singer, dude. Good shit. That motherfucking interview got the most views. And for like the real, just the unity of professional oh, wrestling yeah, and man. what the brotherhood of. We got two hours out of is. that man. We got it's two just hours. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah, two hours. Zombie Dragon, the first one we dropped. Chuck Singer. Probably my favorite interview and the most views that we've gotten from You like interview. Victor Andrews, too, because that was no, a that good was one. very emotional, too. Because his kid wrestles. But this guy, not famous. He's friends with Santa Carly. But he's friends Jake with Jake Roberts. Mm-hmm. Smoke crack with him. <laughs> friends <laughs> with... Yeah. He said it on our pod. What the fuck crack. is the dude... It's crazy. Junkyard dog. Junkyard he was dog. smoking crack, crack with, with junkyard, junkyard dog, dog watching junkyard Jake. dog get uh, his yeah. duck sick. The his night. duck sucked. His, his dick duck sucked. sucked. <laughs> his duck sick. His duck sick. He's getting his duck sick in the back of the the bin. Get back in the bin. Out in the, the car. Van smoking crack. Smoking crack. All right. All right. We need take to take a shot. On yeah. the take a hit. Y'all. Yeah, they're back wow. on the rails again. Psycho yeah. train. Back on the rails. 2023 Dude. year in review. Yeah, but those are some great interviews. But that was a like, that was a like kind of a segue into that. We're getting some interviews coming up in the new year in 2024. <laughs> yep, we have a micro wrestler coming up. Micro, okay, that is a big one for me. It's a big one because you got to think about the. The 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 you know, the uh, I still dichotomy. Wanna, I still want to ask to What's be politically correct. If I don't he know. really cares if he wants to be identified or if he doesn't. Yeah, I don't know how to go about that one, but we've got a difficult uh, interview coming up with wording, I guess. Yeah. Because you know you don't want to be Elf. You don't want to be Will Ferrell. You don't want to be rude. <laughs> oh, you must be a South Pole. No, you don't want none of that. I, I'm. I know I'm being can funny jokes right now but it's just because i was thinking about elf in that scene but either way i want to be politically correct and i want that one to go smooth and good i want all of us to be available for that one that would be a great one he's down to do it i've got a couple other ones i'm not dropping names yet because i don't want to get hopes up for certain names you know if anybody's interested in certain names and plus i don't want to give away my shit if i change it on the fly card subject to change you hear that a lot in wrestling. You're gonna hear it here, I guess, too. But That's everybody's how the used world to it, is, so. dude. I mean, we got fucked in 2023, and we'll talk about that since that was a big year. Oh, that just moment. Too. That's honestly probably our claim to fame. Truly, this analog. We shit had I Billy dropped. Starks. I dropped that like on schedule for an interview. Yes, we did. We and had we Billy had, Starks. We had... She's like wrestling. That's with my Vinia. claim to fame. Okay, Vincent. so you, uh, thank you for reminding me. Vincent. Because you Vinnie said Marcellia. my claim to fame was what was I just gonna was going to be on our show. And yeah, Vinny Marcellia. And they both got picked up by AEW. And so yep. we have to now go through AEW talent uh, relations to dude, get to them. you want to talk... That's probably okay. our claim to fame. Okay, for thank real. you for reminding me. For real. Because my whole... My whole 20... My whole 23 years... Thank you for reminding me. Good and bad. But my whole 23 was anticipation and waiting for Billy Starks to be on my goddamn show. I know. That was what we... But, we but were I digress. That's why, we, be that's why we beat off for a while on everything is yeah. because yeah. we yeah, just I st- we I did. focused I did. on Billy Starks for I did. like intently for a good little I bit. I fell a little bit. We, we know that. Yeah. But our shit grew. Our shit grew and we were falling. Well, I was not... I was like... Well... You know, Bray Wyatt dies, but then, you know, like, it was set, what was it, what was it, it was 12, it was, was it around 12, right? I don't know. Something around like September 12th or something like that. We had her booked. I was on her calendar. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Fell fucking through. Like, I had been on this girl's calendar. The youngest prodigy professional women's wrestler that has ever graced the fucking. And really, we haven't even tried and yes, to I'm see a mark. if we could go through talent relations and show them messages and be like, they have agreed to this. Could we actually see if I'm they would be willing to do it? I'm waiting yeah. for numbers. I'm waiting for my subscribers to grow. I'm waiting for my numbers to grow. That's it. And well, then I'll give it a shot. If I can the, get it to 300 and some, if I can get it 300 and some like my gaming channel, then maybe I'll try it. The message is Because at least there. I have something behind it. Yeah. Because right I think now, that could like, get us clout. Like, for real clout, though. Like... Yeah, worth yeah. a try. 
Well, my claim to fame is that well, we, we should were be literally just... going to have Billy Starks on the show. Literally. We should, we should just be interviewing. Just... I had Rob Killjoy, for Christ's sake. Yeah. I had, I'm friends with Rob Killjoy, right. for Christ's sake. Let's get some wrestlers from PPW. Sin Crowley. He's, we've interviewed him after yeah. the show yeah. and shit that time when we were like, yeah, you know, those yeah. like backstage oh, interviewers. Yeah. That was fun. The Charles Singer, uh, or, yeah, Charles Singer, right? Yeah, Chuck Singer. Yeah. Chuck Singer. He was all the way in the country, or state, and we were fucking talking on the phone. Uh, the other guy was from the other country, was a uh, uh, China, uh, was, uh, oh. Zombie Dragon Zombie from China. Zombie Dragon from China. First interview slinky me and you did. From slinky. Germany. Oh my God, the Slinky interview, bro. The Slinky interview. Guy for he was from he was from Germany, right? His his fucking and I knew that his his because I've been watching Accent him for years. I've been friends with him for years. Me and him talk. I've created him on the game before we exchanged. We've talked to each other on the internet and shit. Mm-hmm. Um. And shit like that, but all of these interviews that we did in the beginning were from me, like, creating them on the game. It came from my interactions. It came from me creating that bond years before. So, in a way, I'm working like Bray Wyatt. Mm -hmm. You know, having stuff out there before you know what that means. Yeah. It's there already. Whatever. But anyway, so with Zombie Dragon, what was I saying about that? Oh, because, I mean, he went from Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. He was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. So WCW trained him, like, his yeah. dream was to be in the WCW. Yeah, go through the whole, like, what was it called, the factory or whatever, the yeah. power, power, whatever it's called. I don't, WCW. Power. Powerhouse or powerhouse, yeah. yeah. Something like that. Are we getting off topic here? 2023. We're very off topic. So it's all three of us in a unit, not just me? We're okay, all cool. off topic. Alright, so Spot Fest, right? Spot Fest. We were talking about new promotions. Over yeah. 2023. Deadlock Pro. Deadlock Pro. OVW. OVW. Fucking um, Pure Pro Wrestling. PPW. Yep. Which got some good views They're on the channel. some good traction this year. Yeah, man. Real they got real. a TV deal with yeah. Martinsville. So, that was so a big your thing best that friend happened. from childhood, high school, high school. Yeah. Well, kind of good. That's uh, no, I, I, okay. So I Tell thought you were like I, I knew you were from high school. I knew that. Yeah, I know you told me that. But I'm always fucking thinking you're, you know, children all the way up. Yeah. Because no. yeah, I don't know why, but <laughs> I just do that. It's whatever. Which but different elementary schools. That is something that needs to happen in this year is me and you and Sin and Joe talking about your Definitely. The dynamic between yes. two friends and wrestling and music. Yes, mm-hmm. we should do that. Because that is interesting. It, it really That's is because it's just the, it's like the art when we talked to John Washington and yeah. we talked about the art of acting and music. And everything that he was doing. Actually, in his most life of our interviews talked about that. Yeah. Jaco. Cole. Yeah. Fucking, because they're all actors. Yeah. Ja Cole was in movies and TV. He he's on like one of those like Tubi or whatever yeah. movies. Like he's on this shit. Like Mayor of Kingston. Ja Cole's in it. Like I know this guy personally yeah. through sin. And the intermingling of art and I. I have digressed from the intermingling of art and music and wrestling and acting and all of that. I used to talk about it a lot, and I think we talk about it when we talk to a human yeah. about professional wrestling, but yeah. we don't really talk about it when we talk about I think if you talk to somebody that's not really up, know, know what you're talking about, you're just an alien to them. Yeah. Everything is just blah, 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 wah, 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 like you're in a fucking Snoopy cartoon, you know what I'm saying? Like, wah, 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 wah. Woodstock's over there looking at you, like, picking his nose, like. And it's funny, because there was one interview we did that was like, it's refreshing to, usually when you talk professional wrestling, you talk to somebody who, my, oh, it was Teresa who made a joke about it, and I was talking on the interview about it's hard to have an intelligent conversation with a professional wrestling fan. And we all laughed about it, but really like when we, I mean, yeah. when we talk about it, it, it's like you see all the, it's just like the internet anywhere. You see all the stupid opinions and just hateful people. And it's just like, how, how do you, and then like half that crowd is a troll. Yeah. 
So, I mean, where what where's the credibility at? Right. And where's all this fake news? Mm. We still bouncing? Um. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. Digress. So, um, Again. covered that. Da, 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 like and subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe, subscribe hit that notification bell. Donate to the donate to the cash app that is presented on the picture. Uh, so we have uh, so messaging. Donate. Donate now. Donate now. Deaths. We uh, talked about deaths. No, but we have to spot fast him. Kyle talking about deaths. So okay, so we have a couple that I can spit off right now. We have uh, Billy Billy Star Graham. I mean Billy. Uh, superstar Billy. Super Graham. super yeah. Superstar Billy Graham. Terry we got Funk. Terry Funk. Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. Jay Briscoe. Jay, Jay Briscoe. That's that cr- yeah. One. That was in this year, man. Jerry sucks that that was one of Jerry our highest Jerry. viewed yep. shorts. That is one of our highest viewed shorts. Is me giving my, my condolence to the family. Okay, but it's great though. It's 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 great in the same. You know what I'm saying? But it's crazy that that's the highest viewed short. Yep. It's my condolence to him. And I feel like I shorted Bray Wyatt. Jerry Jerry. But I feel like I've talked about him enough. Um, to justify it, I think Bray Wyatt was. Yeah. To the biggest loss. Oh, yeah, sure. definitely. And you know what? That's crazy because when he was reading off the list, he went from the bottom to the top, and the top was Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. So, it's insane. It was actually Terry Funk, then Bray Wyatt. Yeah. And Jay It's Briscoe. crazy that Terry wasn't the top. Like you know what I'm saying? Because I'm sorry. Bray Wyatt, I'm Terry. sorry. Yeah. Bray Wyatt. Tammy Lynn Stitt says, I know she's not dead, but. <laughs> she may as well be. Mm-hmm. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, man. We had the rock return. We had the rock return. He buried the Austin rock Theory. Came back. Yeah. Is we talking about returns now? I mean, no, we're not yet, but I'm Is just we, saying. I'm just. The rock just, came back. I'm going oh, over spot fest. In here. that. We're spot monkeys. In that. Part, we're, the, we're the young bucks. When we're the Austin young bucks. got buried by the, the old rock. fucks. He rock bottomed Austin. Yeah, he did. And then he. He talked shit elbowed, to him first. He bro. people elbowed Austin. He people that. Man, take a shot. And then. Take and then hit. he let the other guy. The other that guy. That was in the ring. LA. Mm-mm. Some other guy. Guy that doesn't wrestle very often. Oh, Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee did the people's elbow on. Oh, that's right. That's right. Pat, Austin Theory. Pat McAfee well, had that moment. That's right. Second, that's right. I just saw that time. moment like, they last night. Like, deep. Like, it was twice. Yeah. Pat yeah. McAfee is my dude. I'm highly, like, I love him. Should be a wrestler. Like, that match with Adam Cole, that one time in NXT was a legit hmm. fucking match of the year. Huh. All right. So, we had The Rock. They buried some shit. What do you think about that? Uh, I vaguely remember The Rock coming back. I'm I'm not a big. Yeah, I was shocked when I saw it on there. I was like, "Whoa, damn, that happened this year." Dwayne Johnson, I forgot all about it, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of. I love The Rock, it. and I was always a Rock fan, but now since he's been like that, is all he's done this year. It's like, yeah, he didn't even come back to WrestleMania this year. Yeah, well, he might this year for Roman. Well, let's hope. Uh, <laughs> well, if he's a surprise entry in the Royal Rumble, he, he takes like, it all. Twenty twenty three, he wasn't even in. No, The Rock's Mania. a crock. I don't know. The Rock is something you else. Know what the Rock he did. Doing? He did destroy Adam. I mean Adam. I was going to talk about Adam Rose or something. Austin Theory. Austin Theory destroyed. I don't know why Adam Rose, but um, The Rock buries um Austin Theory like completely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? On that and. And this year, and when I saw it on like SmackDown last night, which I'm pointing at the TV like it's on right now, <laughs> <laughs> but on SmackDown, like, I don't know. It was great. Anyway, because they had that whole end of the year mm. shit. Uh, yeah. Anything you want to say about like Terry Funk or Jay Risco? I think that's all the best I can think of at the moment. Um, I think it was pretty prominent this year. Number of wrestlers we lost. Yeah, ten, at least ten. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it was more than that. Yeah, maybe some others that aren't like you know well known or whatever. But like for the most part, it was like ten, I think. 
people that we actually know and shit, like Billy Star Graham and all that shit. Yeah. Billy Star Graham. Uh, yeah, superstar Billy Graham. Billy Graham. Um, let's see, what else do we need to go over? What uh, have we not talked to Kyle about his opinion on? What all did you do this year? <laughs> what all did I do this year? Like some big moments that you had in this year. I love. Is this unrelated to wrestling? Yeah, just life. We talked okay. about that at the beginning okay. of our life. Oh, uh, you know about our life. Uh, I don't know. Just any type of big things you did this year, like shows, gigs. It's kind of like business as usual. Business as usual. Yeah. Hmm. Same gigs. Music. Yeah. There, there were some uh, new festivals that we did. Smith River Fest. Ooh, new festivals. Yeah. Smith River Fest. Yeah. On Martinsville, so no, Martinsville. that was fun. Mm. <sighs> but yeah, it's been a pretty low key year. Been a low key year. All right, guys. So we're gonna be talking about this damn Goldberg was talking shit. Okay, like, I heard this. Like, we're going into um, this segment. We're gonna call controversies, rumors, truths, and lies. WWE could be planning a huge match for Crown Jewel 2023 as wrestling legend Goldberg. Yeah, we passed that shit. Tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> but we are talking about Goldberg. I tell you that much. Hmm. Goldberg has been heard talking shit. About Vince McMahon and WWE. Mm -hmm. And how he wants to work more. And he wants to come out and do some more matches. Yeah, he wants his retirement. He wants his retirement match. And, and, and hey, he needs it, right? Well, guess what? We got an AEW company. So, there's a... In my head, there's a possible AEW jump. Okay. Goldberg, somebody that's like The Undertaker, somebody you thought was like The Undertaker, someone who's not going to jump ship again, is it could jump ship. And it wasn't going to happen at World's End. I mean, it could have. That would been mm -hmm. dope. You know what I'm saying? That would been dope if he was like, maybe, I don't know if he was behind the devil shit, but if he came out there and destroyed all the devil shit. That would been cool, right? But... They're right there. I just heard that recently. I don't know if there's any like merit to it or anything real to it, but Goldberg out there talking shit. He might get his soon. We don't know. Um, so we're going into um. Let me go ahead and talk about uh a debut that I've been talking. I've been wanting to talk about this whole time is um Mansoor and Mace. You know Mansoor and Mace. They're part of Retribution and all that. Well, Mace was. Anyway, so they debuted on Deadlock Pro. Wrestling, and they said that's their home now. Hmm. Deadlock Bro. So I, I, I say, congrats to them. I mean, they, they moved from the uh, the Tyrant Titans, yeah. you know. So one of the many releases from earlier this year. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So I wanted to go ahead and get that in there. But they debuted for Deadlock Pro. Um, Dolph Ziggler has been released as well. We all know that he's been released for a good minute. He is going to make his debut on AML. That is wild. Yeah, Adam Winston Sable. Yeah, like, he's going to be in AML. That's a Sin Crowley. Uh, he's been there, right? He's been booked there, right? I I'm believe pretty he fucking has. sure. I'm sure he has. Yeah, a lot of those local guys that we know have book, been booked in AML. So yeah. that's a big deal for AML. Sin Crowley getting, needs to get back yeah, to, on the North Carolina side. Yeah. At the beginning of this year... Cody Rhodes returned in 2020. Yeah, he did. We also had the biggest return of ever, you know, when hell froze over. CM Punk. CM we, had Punk. CM, we had CM Punk debut. So. That, that same night, yeah. debuted Randy Orton. Yeah. Yeah, Randy Orton. Which some people were saying could, like, discredit, you know, Randy's, you know, return and, like, fuck up that. But I don't think it did. I think they fucked CM Punk's return up, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think it worked out well Shit. for both of them. I mean, he had a lot of time. Actually, CM Punk, to be honest, he had a lot of time. I'm actually talking about the other time when he didn't have a lot of time for the promo shit, but I digress. Either way, um, I think they get on it. It's a good, good moment, but bringing back a guy and then, well, actually bring back two guys. <laughs> one was just out on injury, you know what I'm saying? The other one's been out seven, eight years now. Nine. Right. Nine or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Hell is probably frozen over. I pretty much believe that. Yeah. Sam Punk's God. Okay. I'm trying to tell you, I got the Chicago stars on my elbows. If you know me, you know. I got the Chicago stars on my elbows mm-hmm. because of Sam Punk. Mm-hmm. He's forever embedded in me. Yep. Just like the Bray Wyatt. Anyway, I digress again. Uh, but big thing for Dolph Ziggler. Big thing for Dolph Ziggler. Elias got released this year. Oh, yeah, Elias did, too, yeah. Well, we need to look that up. Ric Flair releases. debuted in AEW. We need to look up This releases. year. Yeah. Adam Copeland. Yeah, I think Ric Flair. Ric Flair. In AEW this year. And he's promoting this whole energy drink. Like, this whole woo energy. <laughs> I think it's psychotic and Logan, crazy. did he... St- he's not the creator of Prime. No, though. he's a he promoter. start... Wrestling this I think year? He started last year. No, I ain't been done started that shit. But being all okay, so champion, yes. Logan Paul was he won a championship, championship this in this year. So Dolph Ziggler is stepping back into the ring. We might have lost Bray Wyatt, but we had a lot of great shit happen this year. Yeah. And Logan Bro. Paul is not one of them. <laughs> no. He was. Sorry, <laughs> Logan, for for Kyle over here. <laughs> You know that whole saying, fuck you, cow. Is that on South Park? Uh, that South Park pun? I have no idea. It's from somewhere. I'm standing by what I said. Well, <laughs> we Dolph still Ziggler stand was by released Punk from WWE world. this year. Matt Riddle was released. In yes, that's another to, thing we haven't talked about. MLW. Matt Riddle was released this year, and now he's going to be fighting Jacob Fatu at MLW. He's already set up the fucking damn challenge. Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin. That was long past over there. I would have <laughs> thought. I would have thought. WWE tender to you know, 2000 to 2010, and then he got back in in 2017 to 2020. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but on the same with their standards, I mean, like, I would have thought he'd been gone already. Right. Elias drifted away from the WWE this year. Same thing with Cedric Alexander. They're not using him, but he's still there. Riddick Moss. And Riddick and Moss is still there. Riddick Moss got released. Yeah, was that. Riddick Moss got released, and oh, Emma year? got released this year. Oh, wow, they just got married. That's great. We were just talking about that. Top dollar. He got released. Yeah. So did Adonis. He's on the independent scene. Rick Boogs. Fuck. Never recovered after injury. That's a YouTuber. He's doing good on YouTube. He's fine. Aaliyah's journey came to an end. How was that Ariana Grace you were talking about? Maximum, Whose daughter is there? Maximum male Arden models. Grace. Whose daughter is that? Santino Morellis. Santino, yeah. okay. I was trying to remember that the other night. Who Ariana Grace Were released from was. the WWE. The maximum She's male models. She's surprisingly doing pretty good this year. But they I have from returned the, the, the as a team exposure. in another independent scene. The Mustafa Ali was released. Oh, yeah, he released. That was a big one right there, Mustafa Ali. He's he's actually put on a flyer. I just seen him on uh, the Facebook, Mustafa. I believe. Mustafa. Hey, Mustafa Ali was actually on a flyer coming up. You're right, Russell. It's 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 just sad when you're like actually a, a good name in a company like that, and you're just gone. But then people that's not being used at all stay carded, like uh, Cedric Alexander. He's not being used at all, but he's still on the roster. That it doesn't you know whatever it is on pew with me that you keep getting rid of names that keep becoming names in other companies what the fuck is going on here yeah but that is the trick that's the old trick get rid of them long enough for people to forget to get to where they actually miss you blah 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 they go make a name somewhere else yeah same thing has happened with a lot of guys a lot of guys, they came, they came back. You know, Cody Rhodes, he's got a tattoo on his goddamn neck. You think dude, you would have let him fucking put a tattoo on the side of his goddamn <laughs> neck if he was working for him in the previous? Fuck no. 
They had a problem with Paige putting a tattoo on her fucking right here on her on her waist. She's got one right now though. Go look at Soraya's matches. She's got a tattoo right now that she was that that, that she tricked the WWE talent. All her friends, she tricked them. They were all fucking like, oh my god, you got a tattoo. They were all, oh my god, you're gonna get in a lot of trouble. It's not like that over in other companies, man. So if Cody was in the WWE before. Previously, like I just said, he wouldn't get that tattoo on his fucking side of his neck. Mm, it's, no. it's ungodly anyway. You know? Undertaker had that, Sarah. But it looks good now. On his throat looks for good like now. years, it's dude. I know, that's bad, that's bad. On his throat for years. Sarah, I just think it's stupid. I think that's like, uh, too much of a sump. <laughs> Yeah, super simp. That's super simp saying. Michelle made him have it taken off. Super yeah. saying simp. Yeah, take it off. I feel Michelle had him made it. Made super saying simp. Exactly. Like, Another super saying simp moment. <laughs> She's like, you can't have you her can't name have on your my name. name on your throat. It could be Sarah Michelle Geller, but you can't have that. But I love Sarah Michelle Geller. I don't care. And then he's got to have the whole Michelle removal treatment. Tattooed right here. <laughs> no, the whole removal of, of that is fucking more painful than getting a, you know, so he got it covered up, which is the better of the whole deal. You don't want to get it removed. That's ridiculous. It actually hurts worse to get them taken off. I think he did have it removed, though. Well, if he I'm did, pretty he's sure there's fucking nothing ridiculous. Right there. He yeah. just had it removed, dude. Well, Mark, you dumb as hell, dude. You <laughs> tattooed shit on your neck. Anyway. All right, we got to go to releases. We gotta, releases. Uh, well, I well, just talked about it. Well, we got a bunch of releases that probably happened. Or did you just... I just talked about the top ten. Oh, never mind. Okay. So we did that. All right. But I, can do it. I can run through it again. Debuts. Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler debut. Was released. AML. <laughs> Returns. Yes. Uh, like and subscribe. Praise the Lord. Okay, so there was like some rumors since we're talking about all that, like the rumors of James Storm being the devil. There was something going around of James Storm being the devil because of the beer bottle, the Pacific beer bottle. And then they were saying Hangman as well, but mm -hmm. it's because of the beer bottle. But the people who were talking about the James Storm thing was like more plausible because it's like, okay, you went back and reached a little bit back in TNA days and reached for a memory and brought out this memory was like no it's James Storm but then to come to fucking find out it's Adam motherfucking cold baby yeah people thinking too hard yeah I'm thinking that's James Storm good idea though good observation cause it got me thinking maybe it is maybe it is James Storm because I mean, okay. but when, when that guy popped out the side I didn't know who it was but I knew the stature was not James Storm I'll tell you that much right even in a black outfit, I knew it was too small. The guy was little. <laughs> I don't know why I wasn't thinking Adam Cole, but I was thinking Adam Cole, but I wasn't thinking Adam Cole. If that makes any sense to anybody. Cody Rhodes and Rhea Ripley win the Royal Rumble. Oh, that was a good Sami Zayn turns on Roman Reigns and challenges at Elimination Chamber. Yeah. John Cena confronts Austin Theory. Rhea Ripley tops Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania 39. She did top her, though. Roman Reign beats Cody at Rhodes at WrestleMania 39. <laughs> beats Cody at Rhodes. Bad Bunny defeats Damian Priest. Yeah. Seth Rollins wins the World Championship. Gunther's historic and continental title reign. Damian Priest, EO Sky win the money in the bank. Which he ends this year. Gunther ends this year and begins a year. LA Knights. <laughs> champ. Uh, LA Knights rise nice. to stardom. Logan Paul wins the U.S. title. Yes. CM Punk and Randy Orton return. Praise the Lord. Logan Paul is our Jesus. And that, no. I'm just joking. Is the wild <laughs> returns. Well, that's, that's the word. highlights right there. Yeah. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You got to work the crowd. Let's see. Yeah. Thanks about it. Has this been? Were it releases and debuts? Well, I mean, I just tried to do returns, debuts. Um, I don't well, remember. First, Jade did Cargill. Did Jade Cargill. We haven't seen. We, she hasn't done anything in the yeah, ring. Not seen yet. a match yet. 
Yeah, I think they're going. They, they, they still got her in the train and stuff and all that stuff like that. But like, God damn, y'all are taking way too long. She was ready for TV for AEW and she crushed that shit, dude. Say what you want about AEW, I think she'll but probably, uh, there's certain people that crushed it, man. I think she'll be in the Royal Rumble. Okay. I okay, here so we go. Too. Top I twenty four. Got to go up against Charlotte. Top twenty four. Charlotte WWE champion. debuts and returns. Odyssey Jones in NXT. Odyssey Jones in twenty twenty three. I thought he was in twenty twenty two. It must No, Cody also felt like that it was, was in twenty twenty two, but it was twenty twenty three. Odyssey was a return. There's no way Odyssey debuted in this year. There's no fucking way. Or is there? There's no way. There's no way he debuted this year. Honestly, Jones. He came back this year, probably. Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. New names. Well, Alba Fire get a new name. Indy Hartwell. Yeah, for SmackDown. Cameron Grimes. SmackDown. Indy Hartwell went to Raw. Katana Raw. Chance and Caden Carter. Okay. Raw. Oh. In this sheer. I guess I'm just calling what I would see. <laughs> Lita returned this yeah, year. Yeah, and did the whole Becky Lynch. Trish and, Stratus yeah, returned Lynch this year. Yeah, yeah, Becky Lynch thing, yeah. Becky Lynch got a big old put there right there. She didn't even need all that. She already had it. Undertaker came back this year and talked to Bray Wyatt for a brief Oh, yeah, that brief time. little whisper that everybody wondered if what was in his so, ear. Uh, choke slammed. Brown Breaker. Yes. He also <laughs> went to NXT, which is a wild moment for NXT, getting some of them wrestlers. The Rock, That's what I was doing on the game. The Rock returned and beat the fuck out of Austin Theory. Said, Beth Phoenix returned this year to WWE. Edge, did he return this year to WWE? Uh, I mean, he's he been returned. making quite a few returns here and there. <laughs> he did debut in the AEW. Yeah, he debuted in the Ivy AEW. Nile. Ivy Nile, yeah. She debuted on SmackDown? Raw. Is Raw? Is that yep. where the fucking boys are at? Yep. Carlito oh. returned this year. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's right, with the LWO. Yeah. Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane came back from New Japan. Sane. Pretty deadly. She had just had that big match with them. Marseille's had either a there. return or a debut this year in W, like, main roster. Who? Pretty Deadly. Oh, yeah. Pretty Deadly. Yep. They were this year. Grayson Waller. Grayson Waller was this year, too? Mm-mm. Okay. Small Creed boy. Brothers. Yeah. The Boys. The Boys. Them Boys. John Cena returned this year. Oh, yeah. yeah. That guy. A couple times. <laughs> the guy who cannot shave his head Austin for the life Theory of him. And Solo Sokoa. He would return a couple times this year. Go see him Nia in the movie. Jax returned this year. Yes, yeah, she did. You go see John Cena in the movie, and that bald spot is not there. J.D. McDonough had a debut or return CGI. this year. What? J.D. McDonough had a de- debut or return Oh, yes, this year. right. He came in, and he was part of the, the Cruiserweight Classic. Zoe Starks. Zoe Starks, yep. Chelsea Green. Oh, that reminds me. Billy Starks. Man, what a what a fucking phenomenal Starks year she's had. Debut. Dragon Lee. Billy debuted Starks. From just on fire. And CM Punk returned this year. Yeah, CM Punk was probably about the biggest Randy return Orton. this year. That list of 24 didn't even include Randy Orton because <laughs> it was overshadowed by fucking CM Punk. You got damn right. <laughs> you damn right. I am that CM Punk fan. So I, will, thoughts, yeah. I will fucking call him out on his bullshit and say I you love you. You will not you. call him out on his bullshit. I have before don't. called him out on his bullshit. For one brief night. Yeah, what a, it was one brief night, actually. One brief little one outburst. One brief night where you were drunk and I just having an outburst. Have an outburst. I said, fuck you. I was pissed off about it, so then you got pissy about it. Yeah, man. I was like feeding off energy, dog. You were. I was like, we're going to end this year, like, with a bang, a boom, and a CM Punk mic drop. What the fuck's going on? That's what we're going to do. We're going to end the year. We're going to small stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Take w- a hit. Take a shot. W-E. Small things stopping. Big things stopping. W. We're going to be doing all these reviews. TNA and all that shit. Even if the format is going to be doing some shit. I'm going to do shit. 2023 
year end review. This is the highest fuck podcast with you boys. This is the highest fuck podcast with you boys. Matt Jackson, Jedi Joe, motherfucking cool, and Kyle Cage Foster. And we are out at like, Kyle Foster Music. And we are out like Elvis, like Elvis Presley. Presley, chicken grease, and chicken grease. <laughs>